We're going to start off with what I've been endearingly calling the boring ones. <laughs> because they're boring to us because we hear it all the time. We hear it at our pre-start meetings and it's in all the <laughs> SOPs and JSAs and everything you're about to <laughs> understand what they, what they are. We're going to run through some of those and then... The fun begins where we're going to talk about some of the other terms that mm. you won't get told when you're in training. You'll no. just hear them on the run, so they'll be a bit more fun. So we'll get through the boring ones first, hey, Baz? Yep, I reckon that sounds like a damn fine idea. Also be warned, some of these may offend and be explicit in nature. Mm-hmm. But you know what? That's mining. It is. And if you can't hack that, yep. do not do it. And you have to have broad shoulders. And laugh at yourself. Mm. Laugh along with it. Where do you want it? And what we truckies say, the dozer operator on the dump if we can't read his mind. I tried to read a dozer operator's mind once, but it was such a short read I had no information (laughs) whatsoever. (laughs) We were going to be serious, but we're in the... No, this is the giggles glossary. So, yeah, yeah, okay, serious is gone. Hello and welcome to the Beers with a Miner podcast. My name is Mad Mumsy and I've been driving huge dump trucks in Australian open cut mines for over 10 years now. I wish I had a dollar for everyone who said to me, how does a little thing like you drive those big trucks? You must be rich. How do I get a job doing that? My mining friends are asked these questions all the time too. And this is what started the Mad Mumsy journey to share stories and tips from living a mining lifestyle and to let others know what it's really like. Now, let's dig in. Get it? Dig? Mining? (laughs) Oh, crack me up. And in this episode, I crack me up a lot. I sit down with a return visitor, Mad Baz. As a miner of 30 years in the industry, he had to be the obvious choice to sit down and talk to about mining terms you need to know. And some of you might not sleep after you hear what they are, (laughs) but it's a bit of fun. The first 20 to 30 minutes, we're running through the basic boring ones, as I call them, because you're going to hear them all the time. But if you happen to be a new person tuning in, this will be gold for you because you'll start to hear how we speak out in the mines. You are going to get to listen straight (laughs) from the gold dripping from the ceiling with Baz sharing with us what all the acronyms mean. And we don't go through all of them. We do run through the basic overview. This isn't the encyclopedia of mining, but it is another language. And as I've started writing them down, you realise just how much we talk about that if you're not in the game, you just would not have a clue. So we start off talking about those ones and they are important. So if you're an old timer and you've been doing this for a while and you know what a SSE, JSA, PPE and OCE are, (laughs) you can skip straight ahead to about 30 minutes. The fun starts when we start talking about cartons of beer, which is quite appropriate really, since the podcast is called Beers with a Miner. You can download your very own copy to print out If you head over to mining.teachable.com, and there's also a link on my website that will take you there. At the moment, I have three free courses that may be of interest to you, and this is where you can download your very own copy of the Mining Glossary and Mad Mumsy's Giggle Glossary. Now, before any more dribbling from me, let's get stuck right in and listen to Mad Mumsy and Mad Baz as We have a couple of beers in my donger out at work and talk about this crazy mining language that we all need to know. So here I am in my donger with Mad Baz. Welcome to the podcast, Mad Baz. Thank you very much. What we're going to do tonight is just run through some mining terms that you need to know, especially as a newbie, because... It's another language and you're going to be stuck out there in a truck doing something different that you're not used to doing and then there's going to be all these people saying things that you don't know what they're on about and they're going to be saying it over two-way radio that you're not used to listening to. So the reason I'm doing this is to give you a bit of a heads up about what the hell everyone's on about. 
Yeah, Do you I agree? understand that for sure. Yep, I was a bit dumbfounded when I first started too, but I think, what are they talking about? We just ran through quickly what I have written down here, but I don't intend this to be the encyclopedia of mining no. uh, terms. Yeah, just some of the things that we'll hear on the radio or in general conversation around the crib hut or on the bus or wherever you are. So a bit of an idea of what they're talking about. And we're going to start off with what I've been... <laughs> endearingly calling the boring ones <laughs> because they're boring to us because we hear it all the time we hear it at our pre-start meetings and it's in all the <laughs> SOPs and JSAs and everything you're about to <laughs> understand yeah. what they what they are hmm. um but then we're going to run through some of those and then the fun begins where we're going to talk about some of the other terms that mm. you won't get told when you're in training. You'll no. just hear them on the run, so they'll be a bit more fun. So we'll get through the boring ones first, hey, Baz? Yep, I reckon that sounds like a damn fine idea. Okay, you can start us off. I'll okay. just say uh, we're coming mainly from coal mining in Queensland, Yep, but a lot of these are generic in mining anyway yeah that yeah some are, are some aren't but yeah. um a lot of things yeah the hierarchy i guess is different but all your rules and all the the common things they're they're across all mining mm. no matter what you're mining yeah okay you want to start oh, us me off? oh that's you. me yeah, that's okay you. all right <laughs> so the the most important man on site or woman is the sse who is the site senior executive they're the boss they are at the buck stops with him and he makes the rules and you will follow the rules. And they also are the one who is ultimately responsible for what happens at the mine and, and if anyone's going to jail... It'll be him. It'll be them. Yes, yeah. and they are responsible for your safety and this is why the rules apply and all of the uh, other things, as uh, Mad Mumsy said, the SOPs and JSAs and HRZs and all that sort of stuff... He is responsible for all of those to make sure that you go home every night and on your week off you go home to your family, your friends, your leisure time, whatever you want to do. And he's he's the man. He is the man. Or the woman. Or the woman. Yes, yes they, definitely. But they are the SSE, so that's Site Senior Executive. Uh, the next one is... Open Cut Examiner, who we call the OCE... He can shut down the site and override the SSE if he deems there to be a major problem within the work area. But um, he, he will drive around all day for 12 hours. He will examine, as his name says, um, all the high walls, the low walls, the pit floors, the water, everything to do with the mine for safety. And if there are any problems, then they are taken care of with your JSAs and your SOPs and all that sort of stuff, <laughs> which come always come into play. Yeah. Yes. And if things are going on, like, weather-wise, so if there's fog, they'll close the road, or if it's excess dust, they might make a pit stop until they get it watered because yep. they know the farmer next door is going to complain. Or... That's right. Or if there's a big uh, thunderstorm coming and mm. rain, we can't operate in the rain because the trucks don't handle the ramps in the rain so we usually park up but he is aware of all that he's got as much responsibility for us the coal mine worker which is the next one we talk about as far as the safety of the pit and the workers everything he has as much power if not more than the site senior executive mm, yeah because and they are the ones that are the, there's always an OCE Always. On site. Yeah. Or two, depending how large your mine is. There might be a southern OCE, a northern OCE, or, yeah. I've yeah. worked on different sites with some have two, some have one. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a big responsibility, and they have to do their drive rounds and, yeah. and stuff. So, the, yes. They, cool. they run the whole mine site, and if he is not there, then we don't go to work. Mm. It's as simple as that, because he has to be there to make all those final decisions. Yeah. And they do a lot of decisions about 
signage as well yeah on site traffic control should we do this no we need to keep that ramp open or yeah they yeah. make ultimate decisions above a supervisor yes yes that's right and they're <clears throat> usually independent so yeah. they're not um, under pressure for production and stuff mm. their job is to make sure the next one the CMW coal the mine worker coal mine worker that'll be you oh like us yeah you're the people who are going to be out there doing all the major work because that's what you're getting paid all these big money for and making everybody safe. Mm. And doing all the things that we need to do right by all of the... Oh, this oh. is flowing quite hey, well, this, isn't it? This is flowing very well. According to the SOP, now the SOP is your standard operating procedure. You'll go through a lot of these and you'll think, oh my God, what is this stuff? But all it is is it's explaining to you how something will be done. It's a rule, a regulation, and it's the standard throughout the whole mining industry, not only in coal, but in hard rock, in quarry, even in civil work, like the main roads and all that sort of stuff, they have SOPs. They have a standard operating procedure, which is a little bit different than a SWP, which is standard work practice, which goes hand in hand with that. But... It's how you drive your truck has an SOP. How you tip your load off has an SOP. How you get loaded has an SOP. SOPs are there for your protection, for your safety, so that you operate your little piece of machinery as you're supposed to and everything goes nice and sweet. If everyone... Does the same. Does the same as per the SOPs? Yes, that's how it works. It's all gold. And you explain to us what a JSA is. A JSA is a job safety analysis, or sometimes it's called a JSEA, which mm. is a job safety and environment analysis. Oh, I always wonder what the E was for. Yes. I haven't worked with JSEAs, but I've heard a lot of people call them that. I'm like, oh, it's a JSA. Yes. But, yeah. yeah, so it's yeah. environment. Yes, yes because, because that is a huge part. Absolutely, absolutely, yep. We have to consider the environment in any job that we do. A JSEA is more at the top of the pit when you're moving topsoil, knocking down trees, you might have a water course or a creek or a river or something. Nearby, you've got to consider implications of your actions when you start moving stuff around. A JSA, however, is more in the pit, if you have a certain job that needs to be done and it's out of the ordinary, it's it's a mm. bit different than your normal run-of-the-mill kind of... Standard operating procedure. Standard operating procedure, that's SOP, correct. SOP, yeah, yeah. yeah. So a JSA is constructed, built by the written? OCE. Written? Written, yes, <laughs> put on paper. Uh, the OCE, the supervisor the leading hand and then they will put that JSA forward to the coal mine worker. They will go through it, read it and understand what the job steps are and they go through what hazards there are in doing this job, what risks there are in doing this job. Mm. How can we do this job safely? Then they will ask the workers, the truck drivers, the dozer operators, the digger operators, can you think of anything else which may affect our safety if we do this job? So everybody has input and then it is written down onto a form. Everybody reads it, you sign off on it, and then you must carry out what is written on that JSA. Mm. And anyone going into that area, there's usually a sign that says this is a JSA area, area yeah. and you must sign it. Sometimes the JSA will be on the sign and you can pull it out and sign it or That's you'll right. have to go up to the crib hut or contact the supervisor yeah where do i sign the jsa so That's and right. that is a that is a very common thing that we have to do at pre-start so be a jsa because there might be a hazard a bit of the wall falling down or That's something right. and we've got to figure out how to get around it so, yeah yeah something yeah. out of the ordinary it's, it's common sense your... but it needs to be written down because it's different yes and yeah. you must read it understand it 
and then follow the directions on the JSA and you'll be safe and your workmate will be safe and you'll all go home to your family. Which is the number one goal. That is the, that's the priority. Yes. So what's our next one? Our next one, high risk zone. A high risk zone is an area where there is big machinery and you want to take a vehicle, a light vehicle, into that area. There is a zone where you have to pull up and call the operator who is working in that area and ask for permission to come in. Um, if it's on the floor where the excavator or the shovel is working, they will load the trucks that are there, then the trucks will wait outside of that area while the low light vehicle goes in. It might be a fitter who wants to look at the digger. It might be a boss who wants to go down and inspect the work area. But there will be no movement of any other high um, heavy vehicles in that area while there's a light vehicle in there. Mm. And generally, it does vary from site to site, but yeah. usually you have to, the uh, the trucks, the heavy vehicles have to wait at the sign until the light vehicle has been in, done whatever they have to do, and then come out. And if there's any that are in there, you have to get out. That's or right. they'll wait until they load you and you drive off, and then the light vehicles will go in. Yeah. Say they're swapping out the digger driver. Yeah. It's a very common thing that happens all the time for us. Yeah. You truckies, when you come back from the dump, wait yeah. out of the high-risk zone. <laughs> and the high-risk zone can be the HRZ can be called different things on different sites but That's it right. still yeah. means the same thing <clears throat> it's the same thing yeah. mm. no big machinery in the area while there are light vehicles in that area yeah what is that noise is that your phone uh, yeah. yeah i'm sorry that's my phone i'm popular yeah, <laughs> that's all right. Just whack it on silent. Oh, because right. I'm gonna have to edit the shit out of that. That's all right. Good time for a beer. Oh, cheers, Baz. Anyway, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Happy New Year. Yes. Happy, so, Easter. Happy Valentine's Day. Well, I'll, just a quick interlude. We get to catch up. I'm start day shift tomorrow, and Mad Baz has just finished seven. So he's happy, and I'm like, oh, I gotta go. <laughs> so I'm but, having my one beer before I go to work tomorrow, and um, Baz can I'm have a few. I'm having several. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're finished. Yeah. <laughs> There's two uh, reasons to drink beer. One is, oh, no, I'm going to work. And <laughs> the other one is, oh, yes, I finished. <laughs> Hell, yeah, you finished. Seven hot, long, dusty oh, days. Yeah. Anyway, ka-ch- I mm. love that sound. It's the best sound in the world. Isn't it? Isn't it? Duty you... of care. Mm. Which yes. you will hear over and over and, and over. And that will be followed up by Section 39 of the Mining Act. Yeah, if we're talking coal in Queensland. Yes. yes. Your duty of care, that is um, you must work safely to ensure that you do not get hurt. But you must also work safely to ensure that none of your workmates get hurt. Mm. And your duty and care covers other areas like drugs and alcohol and firearms and all that sort of stuff. And it is the most important section of the Mining Act, which covers everybody from the lovely cleaners who go out and clean our crib rooms right up to the site senior executive. Mm. We all have the duty of care to protect ourselves and our workmates. And our workmates. Yeah. And that may mean... Sounds like I'm reading it, doesn't it? Oh, no, it <laughs> sounds like you've been brainwashed and you've heard it a lot of times. That's it. <laughs> Which yep. is how you end up yes. um, after 20 plus years in yeah. mining. But 30 years this 30, year. 30, yeah. 30. Wow. Oh, my God. Mm. I'm hoping i got nine months left. <laughs> um, but it is... We do jest and we laugh, but it is the most serious thing and it's the way that we all get to get home safely but it may mean that you need to pull up a workmate or someone that you see who isn't quite doing the right thing let's face it if shit goes down they say well it was your duty of care to have not let that happen that's right so and it's a mining act it's that's how you can end up in jail if you don't enact your duty of care 
buy the SOPs, buy everything that you sign when you first start. Mm -hmm. You can be the one who goes to jail. Yep. So it's very serious. Yeah, it is. Which we don't hear very often on the Beers with the Minor podcast, but this is what we're... You're going to hear this when you start. This is right, yeah. They're they're going to... That'll be one of the main things. And it is a serious business because... As it says, duty of care. It's your duty of care. Mm. And part of that is if you see something, as Mumsy said, someone doing something that they outside the SOP, chat with them first. If they don't get any change, chat to your supervisor. If that doesn't happen, go higher and get it fixed. Mm. And it's also things like if identifying, oh, that sounds like I'm straight out of the... Yeah. Training manual here, Baz. This yeah. isn't how I roll. Well, look, let's get to the fun bit in a minute. But yeah. it, but it's if you see a hazard, yeah. if you see something, it's your duty of care to say, "Oopsie, I overwatered the ramp." Yeah. Um, and you know, if you're on the water cart or a big um, rock, fell a big out rock of the wall. just fell out <laughs> the wall, uh, get onto your supervisor. So it's in your duty of care to also let others know. There's so much that it covers. It does. But that's it covers that's your whole moment. everything you do out there is covered by duty of care. Mm. And mm. everyone else is under the same obligation. Exactly right. Yeah. You yeah. are obligated. Yeah. So if people see you doing something you're not quite sure of, if someone pulls you up, it doesn't mean, oh, you know, they're having to go and they hate you or anything. It's mm. it's their duty of care. Yep. To, to say, listen, listen here, mate, or listen here, love, or whatever. Mm. Mm. You know, you probably shouldn't do it like that. I remember the first time... I had to, at one mine, at band camp, <laughs> I had to take a truck into town, which is, you know, the where the workshops are, and they and, call it town. And the office. And it? the office and everything. And um, I called up to come around a road train that was towing five trailers full of coal, and I called up to come around them. But um, you're not allowed to overtake them because <laughs> they go a lot faster than we do, as it turns out. They but do. I they didn't do. know that. And yeah. I, I, he goes, oh, mate, I think you'd be right if you just stay there. <laughs> and and because that was a different contractor altogether. And I just started at this mine. I was still new in mining. And I remember the next morning... A guy, old fella like you, Mad Baz. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not old, I'm just worn out. <laughs> <laughs> he sat next to me and he said, you know, yeah, no, it's not a good idea to overtake them. <laughs> I said, well, he was going really slow because they do. They're towing five trailers yeah. up a hill. He said, tons. yeah, but once they get a roll up, they're going to He's get... I said, yeah, I know, you yeah. soon got away from me. He goes, <laughs> and you know what? You're not meant to. Mm. Just telling you love. And I remember he kind of put it, he didn't put his arm around me, but it was that, he he did it in a nice way and it was his duty of care, kind of, you know. Not kind of, it was, Mm. to to point out that fact that large, (laughs) heavy vehicles are not allowed to overtake large, heavy vehicles. That's right. (laughs) And that's pretty much across all That's all mining, Mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Unless there's poscons because it's broken down. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, so, hanging down or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's. It. We'll, <laughs> we'll get to that. Okay, let's let's rock through a couple of these. We won't go too much further on these uh, boring ones, but PPE is another big one that Very you're going to hear all yep. the time. They might even ask you that at an interview. I know someone who was asked that in an interview. Okay, personal protective equipment. We must all have it, whether you like it or not. That's safety glasses, earplugs, gloves, high visibility protective clothing. Shirts and pants. Shirts and pants. It says me with no reflective stripes on my pants. And steel cap Well, that that does vary from site to site, whether you have to have reflective tape on your pants as well as your shirts. Good point. Yes. It is. Yes. Yeah, especially underground. You, oh, no. I'm not going underground. I'll be underground long enough when I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So personal protective equipment, all supplied by the mining company. So Or whoever you work for. Or whoever you work for. If you're a contractor, they are meant to supply them as well. Yeah. So you get used to it. <laughs> yeah. Pretty orange or pretty yellow. yellow. So PPE... And they usually have places at Krubhouts and that where you can 
grab your earplugs, especially earplugs. You go through heaps. Yeah. Never put your earplugs back in. No. If you wear Just your earplugs and go for them. crib, throw them in the bin, mm. get a new lot, and make sure your hands are clean, otherwise you get oil and coal dust and whatever else. Yeah, in you ears. get infections. Yes. And, yes. Yeah. Yucky. They take a bit of getting used to as well. They do. And there are various types. Yeah, it's a big thing. And, and if you're not comfortable with that, then you can request to have earmuffs, which is, um, I've seen a lot of operators mm. wearing earmuffs instead of plugs. Yeah. Yeah, mm. like the big koala ears. Yeah. Yeah, quite. you've worn them before. I have, yeah. 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 Okay, so we might just leave most of that, which is yeah. on my list for this. If you head to mining.teachable.com, which is my online teaching hub. Do you like that? Sounds I good. I do like that. Uh, you You're can clever. See, you can see this glossary of mining terms in a printed PDF. So you can even print print it out if you want. It's got things like crib, which is you know when you have your lunch, your smoko, and fill point, fill up the water carts, pre start where we all get together and have. A meeting before we go out to work so we know what to expect what's going on mm, stuff like that that's right get your instructions for the day yeah and i also go into a lot of things about when you do drive a truck and some terms from the diggers and the way that they'll want you to load and everything you will learn most of this in your training but it just gives you a little bit of a head start of what you're up to that's right oh and also machines that you may encounter mm. Mm, because mm. when i first started i didn't know what any of them was when were, man was, when were. yeah <laughs> when mad mumsy first started i trained her in her first mining job i said do you know what any of these machines are and she said i know what that one there is it's a big long thing with lots of wheels and a big blade underneath it and it holds you up because it's doing road works I said, yes, that's called a grader. <laughs> now she operates one. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, my daughter came on a mine tour and she called a bulldozer or a dozer, we call them. We don't call them a bulldozer. Track dozer. Track dozer, yeah. Uh, hence, I, I hence, know some people call it a bull tractor. Yeah, or hence the name tractor because it has a track. A track, yes. yes. And okay. graders are quite often called long tractors. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I haven't heard that. Well, no. there you go. But she called it a pushy over the edge thingy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because and it, and it, it was, was on the dump and yeah. it was pushing the dirt was, over the edge. Yeah, so. and it was purple. Was it? <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah, it was Oh, uh, yeah. my gosh. That's so funny. Yeah. Oh, all right. So, we'll, how are you going for a drink there, Baz? Do you oh, need another drink? Beers with a miner. I've got to have beers, another one. Beers, you better. We're going to get into the fun stuff now. And... Uh, A bit of a word of warning, which you know with Mad Mumsy, that um, it's going to get a bit explicit. I'm having one of yours. Yeah, go for it. Might be frozen. Yeah, I've got teeth. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. So, um, Uh, I don't know if you picked it up yet, but there's a bit of a common thread here between the two of us. You've got Mad Mumsy and Mad Baz that sort of gives you an idea that we could be related. Uh, Yes, could be. (laughs) And if you listen to Mad Baz when he first came on the podcast, which will be, you can hear that episode at, uh, where at? Madmumsy.com, beers. 21. 24. Yeah, he's looking at my notes. Beers 21 is your episode. I thought it was 18. No, I looked it up. Okay, Your beers, beers 21. Beers 21, and the show notes for this episode will be madmumsy.com forward slash beers 44. And I'll leave a link in there so that you can go to the teachable school and see all of these um, terms, more terms than we're going to cover now because some of us has to go to work tomorrow. Can I just interrupt <laughs> you for a moment? No. <laughs> I love that sound. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Next. That was one point I wanted to say is that some of them, you may have heard their Australian slang, you know, mm. like, oh, yeah, I've heard that before. But we'll talk about how it, how it's used in mining. Yeah. So, Could get a bit risque. Yeah. And, <laughs> and some of these, I, like, I, put a, I put a call out to my crew and over a couple of weeks, they were calling me up on the two-way. Hey, mate, Mumsy, you better write that one down. <laughs> and there, some of them, 
I hadn't heard, mm. but other people at the crib had, and my boss even kicked in with a couple and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. And awesome. also be warned, some of these may offend and be explicit in nature. Mm-hmm. But you know what? That's mining. It is. And if you can't hack that, yeah. do not do it. You've got to have a bit of mongrel in you. Yes. And you have to have broad shoulders. Yeah. And laugh at yourself. Mm. Laugh along with it, and the more you buck up against, like especially a nickname, we've oh. I've never spoken about that on a podcast. Oh. The more you go against a nickname you don't like, the more they're going to call you that. That's right. You know, so just go along with it, and they'll probably get bored and call you something else anyway. Yeah. So anyway, that's off topic. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go. Okay. You that, haven't seen this list yet. This will be fun. This will be fun. Okay. Starting the most important one. That's a carton. That's a carton. Yeah, if you stuff up, do something wrong, you buy a carton of beer. And it's shared usually with the crew on a particular day, usually on day shift. Second to last night, middle of the week, whatever, and everyone gets together. And you drink the cartons. Yeah. So when you come out, bring 50 bucks because you've got to put on a starter's carton. Starter's carton, <laughs> finishes carton. Finishes carton. Finishing carton. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was talking to Lynn, who is also your wife. Oh, yeah. And my mum. I but remember. But she's in, uh, we were talking about this last night, and she said uh, one of the mines she was at, they on a, they did it every Friday night because there was that many cartons. That's Sometimes right. there'd be 20 cartons on yep. a Friday night. On a Friday night. Yep. Wow. <laughs> they were very educated. They didn't have much duty of care, did they? <laughs> well, they did. Well, they did. The duty of, each other right in. Yeah, their duty of care was to make sure there was plenty of cartons on Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't care who bought it. Yeah. And she said the office people never had to put up a carton, but they're always there drinking it. That's right. Yeah, yep. but we won't go there. No, okay, we won't. Okay, we better go, go down the list. Right. Okay. The next one. My Pine favourite up. fruit. <laughs> pineapple. That's a pineapple. That's a pineapple. Did you get or a you... pineapple? Yes, that's when you um, you do something wrong enough that a supervisor decides to step in and say, Oi, you, in my office. And when you walk out, you usually walking bow-legged because you've got a pineapple. <laughs> And what they mean by that is the prickly end. You've had the yeah. prickly end up the end. You don't want it going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You get yeah. the prickly end up, yeah. That's yeah. right. Yep. And so if some, if and it'll jokingly, people will bandy it around all the time. They say, righto, Baz, get your gear, get out. Get out the truck, go to the go line, come to pick you up, and everyone will be like, oh, pineapple time, Baz. So if you yeah. hear pineapple time, it doesn't mean you're getting one. <laughs> we always assume, oh, shit, what have I done wrong? <laughs> but you might just be going to get another truck, or for you, you might be going to train someone yeah, or whatever. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I might have to train some of you guys. <laughs> look out. Yeah, look out. Um, okay, it's not rocket science, just line up the teeth. <laughs> Pedestal dwellers. They live on a pedestal. We call them pedestal dwellers. They call themselves digger drivers oh, or digger I operators. Yes, because they're up there above everybody else and they're God. Yeah. They are God. I dug 300 loads of dirt today. Guess what? I break the record. You know what? It's not rocket science. A digger operator is only as good as his truckies. Well, and that is a saying that is further down the list. Oh, <laughs> Digger well, driver is only as go. good as his worst trucky. Yeah. <laughs> but what, right. it, what it means is a frustrated digger driver telling you where they want you to line your truck up so that they can load you. Yes. They're like, yeah, just like on the teeth, <laughs> it's not which you'll hear a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, upper is another one. Yeah. So upper. you might call up and say you Coming around or do this, yeah, upper, 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 move or it, upper, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that just means, yeah, go and get, get, <laughs> do it, just yeah. do it. You can oh, say this. Oh <laughs> yeah, okay. This, this is sort of uh, to do with graders, uh, water carts when they're watering, dozers, dozers. They call up and they say to the digger driver or the shovel operator. I'm just coming across your face. Yeah, or trucky. Or trucky. Yeah. yeah, just coming across your face. What that actually means is they want to go in front of you. Yes. It's nothing naughty. 
And it's like when the digger operator says, come in on my teeth. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Me. I need to write that one down. <laughs> Pause here, editor. You know, and people have a bit of a giggle. And it can be <laughs> fatigue management, you know. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, it's fun. It's, the, yeah. The, the biggest fun, though, is the comments that come after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> From whoever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll run down the list. Keep going there, Baz. Yeah, okay. If you're having trouble early on, um, you're in a truck and you go up to the dump and you can't get square to the tip head, you can't, you just can't get it right and the, uh, you'll get told, oh, that'll do, just tip it there. Go, get. <laughs> get off my dump, I get haven't got time. Get off my dump, there's three <laughs> trucks lined up behind you. <laughs> yeah, and that's okay. That's yeah. right. It's all in your learning. It's all it's all good fun. Yeah. And then, of course, what you do is <laughs> when you lift your tub up, you start driving away and you run the load out. And no, you he's don't. He's got to no, clean you it don't. up. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when you'll hear other people on... Actually, good point. Other people on the two-way will say, yeah, just run it out, run it <laughs> out. And the dozer driver doesn't... And that means... Drive off with your tray up and the dirt goes for a long way. Yes. Um, and the dozer driver will be going, don't you dare. <laughs> so it's good to start to know on the two-way people's voices. Yes. And it's all a bit of banter and it's a bit of fun, but it can also really piss them off. Yeah. If they're having a bad day anyway or they're in, they've only got four or five spots wide, they're doing a ramp on a lift, like, they're under the pump a lot oh, yeah. of times. The so, last thing they need is yeah. to have to drive 30 metres and push the dirt up. Yeah. <laughs> and other people say, ah, you got a blade, just push it. Yeah. I think that might be on the list. Okay, yeah. go. <laughs> Where do you want it? And what we truckies say, the dozer operator on the dump if we can't read his mind. I tried to read a dozer operator's mind once, but it was such a short read, I had no information <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> We were going to be serious, but oh, we're sorry. in the... No, this is the giggles glossary. The giggles so, yeah, glossary, yeah, okay. Yeah, serious yeah. is gone. Yeah, so, yep, yeah, where do you want it? Where do you want it? Uh, yeah. At the start, at the wing, 45 minutes. Well, yeah, just tip it yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> and um, it could also be if you've got an overload yes. and you've got to take it back to the digger or do you drive all the way dump, which is always a bit of a grey area, depending on your site. Yep. Depending on, you know, where you are when you finally get overloaded, you might be nearly at the dump by the time it hooks in because it will slow you down. If you don't know, when you're in a truck and you get overloaded, it will slow you down to 10 k's. Yep. And um, it holds all the other trucks up. So a lot of times they'll want you to take it back to the face where the digger is and they say, if he's overloaded, you didn't skip. But some of the trucks, mm. they don't read it right. And he goes, oh, how many buckets did you get? Did you try to, <laughs> oh, my God. Did nah. you hit second gear in a cat truck or did you fly away to in yeah. oh, yeah. Just where do you want it? And some people have been <laughs> mining for a long time and they still can't read the dump. And they go, where do you want it? Where do you think I want it? Over the tip head. But. You know, yeah. doesn't well, happen. and it goes the other way too. When a dozer driver will call you up and say, "Oh, can you put it next to the wing or next to that load there?" and you, you just want to say, "What the fuck do you think I was going to put it?" <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. I can read your dump. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's when you they run just it like, out. <laughs> and, yeah, <laughs> they just like the sound of their own voice. They do. Yeah. They have two radios so they can hear themselves talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Next, moving on. Uh, Kiwi backblading is, is probably not actual, it's called Kiwi push, and it's done when you backblade. Uh, that means, I've only ever heard it called Kiwi backblading. No. So what that means is the, the dozer, he'll do a bit of a clean up, and then he'll put the blade on the ground, and he'll drag it backwards and to make it nice and smooth. It looks good, but you're not supposed to do it because it wears out all your cutting edges and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And they always say Kiwi backblading. Yeah, I say Kiwi push. Oh, right. Okay, <laughs> cool. See, well, that's not yeah. on there. And this is what, I mean, when I started asking the crew, some mm. of these they came up with, but yeah. at the moment, so far, they're mine. Yeah. Uh, my left, not your left. Yeah, the other left. The other left. <laughs> the, yeah. No, your other left, that's there. <laughs> yeah. When, when you... <laughs> You're driving a truck and the dozer operator says, bring it on the left of the dozer. And you think, 
is that my left or your left? And you think, oh. Mm. And because he's facing the other way as you, but then when you turn around, you're going to be gonna facing, be facing the, other the other way. You're going to be facing the other way because you're reversing in to tip the load off. So, But rule of thumb, mm. if they always want you on the left, that's your left. And you always keep the dozer or the grader on your left because it's a left-hand drive truck and mm. that's where you can see. So, you, yeah, you're on side, which I don't know if that's side. on my list. You're, but, yes. Um, yes, so you always have it, if you remember, you always will have it on your on side, yes. pretty much. I just won't. That's your I won't left. Spot to a dozer <laughs> on my off side. No, that's your I just left. said, no, you yeah, no. Yes, off, but on they're side. facing the other way. Is it your left or my left? Yeah, and it can get a bit confusing, it and does. some people just don't know. You just tip it behind them and run it out. Yeah. <laughs> And then that's when they say, no, you're on the left. <laughs> and, yeah, you're on the left. Yeah. And that's a frustrated dozer driver once again. <laughs> exactly. They're all frustrated. That's yeah, why they're, they're frustrated the with us. What's this term, the next one? Oh, coal mine worker, commonly known as a bonehead. Truck driver. Truck yes. drivers. Yeah. Bonehead. Single brain cell, like a womble, bonehead. And we know nothing but... We know more than them because we can make them look very, very good or we can make them look very, very bad. That's right. And there's a lot more to it than people think. Oh, yes. I couldn't believe it when I heard the endearing term bonehead. Mm. I'd never heard it before. I'm like, what? Mm. And then another one is uh, window lickers. Window lickers. Window yeah. lickers. Yeah. No, just operators. Yeah. Um, um, just talking of boneheads who know nothing, I'm actually a trainer <laughs> assessor. And the OCE, that's, I can't hear you, Open Cut Examiner. Are <laughs> well, we going to have a quiz? We're going to have a having test. having a quiz. <laughs> he, yes. He's called me up and said, where are you? Because I was parked up at the time having a sleep, uh, having a <laughs> fitter look at my truck. And uh, I was parked up and he came up and walked up to my truck and I thought I was in trouble. And he says, I need you to RPO me on a Terex truck. Really? Which means he wants me to sign him off so that he can operate a Terex truck. Fun, you got the OCE in there. On the report, after I signed the report, I put, he needs a couple more stints with a trainer <laughs> and a couple of night shifts before I sign him off. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't do it. That's hilarious. Yeah. And RPO? Uh, is another word? Yeah, it's recognised prior learning. So mm. if you've operated any kind of truck or loader or anything like that, if you have a certificate that states that, that is recognised prior learning or RPL, and therefore you don't have to go through the whole training thing. Mm. It's just like a refresher course for yourself. Yeah, and the train will do a walk around with you and yeah. stuff. Especially when you go from mine site to mine site and it's a Cat 795 or, yeah. you know, the same truck. Yes. Yeah, if you're coming from our industry and going to that, they'll go, oh, we'll RPL him on the dozer yeah. and just do a walk around with the train and give him a couple of push. Yeah, he's obviously done that before. As long as you have written evidence that you've done that, then you don't have to go through full training, which yeah. is so much easier on oh, me. Oh, my God. <laughs> and log books mm. and wah, wah, wah. Yeah, got to love that. Um, never win on the water cart. Yeah, you cannot. You cannot. If Just you're, give up. Yeah, if you're a water cart operator and it's hot and it's windy, there's never enough water. So you try and make adjustments. And then there's too much water. And then they want to have a dry line. A dry line is where the grader comes along, like Mad Mumsy, and puts the blade on the ground and cuts the water and the mud off the road that the wanker in the water tanker <laughs> has put down and it's too wet because the trucks are sliding everywhere. But you'd never win on a water cart. Yeah. And... Once I realised that, I think you taught me that probably. Mm, probably. Um, I started to enjoy it. Yeah. Because yeah. you just drive around, oh, I might go over there and water there to that. Now, right. now, I'll, now I'll go over there, oh, I might go and fill up and, yep. oh, it must be nearly empty. Um, you're in your own little world. You are. Um, and you're always busy. 
You're mm. always busy you're, because you're operating sprays and you're calling up people that you're filling coming up. on their circuit. You go and fill up and then you go and then, oh, it's crib time. Yeah. Or you might have to go and, and you, you've got this whole plan. I'll go and water, especially end of shift or, you know, go and for crib. I'll go and uh, water the circuit. I'll fill up and that'll be about the right time to head up and then they'll want you to come and hose out a dozer or... Yeah. Or the sh- the digger yeah. for a couple of hours, and your foot goes numb because you've got to keep the revs up. And yeah. that's stuff where like survey that. pegs come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> you have it cut just enough so that edit, 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 edit <laughs> so that it, it it pushes the throttle down onto the floor, and you stick it on the front of your seat. And then you don't have to keep your foot on there. Yeah, because if you didn't know, for the water to come out, you've got to keep your foot on the pedal to get the the revs. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I do remember once um, that I was over in a a pit on night shift, miles away. There were yowies out there, which is on this list. There's bloody yowies out there. Look out for yowies. And I was so scared. And um, I was there for freaking hours. The boss is like, what did you do? I was there for, it took him forever to wash his drill. <laughs> and I was on night shift. So anyway, I must have eventually fell asleep. Because I kept watching him. It was on, off. Because they'll look at you and go, no. And they do the little cut your throat thing, which yeah. means stop cut, the pump. Cut, cut. Yeah. So you watch, where's the little man with the white suit? What is that called? Sperm, sperm, sperm suit. suit. <laughs> oh, my gosh. They so look he, like a sperm. So and they're, they're washing off suit. the digger and uh the drill it was and then um neck neck minute neck, <laughs> neck minute <laughs> neck minute he's up tapping on the window of the water cup like oh he goes oh you can finish now he's doing the big <laughs> cut 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 <laughs> but i fell asleep i got that good at having my foot flat i fell asleep with my foot flat yeah and yep. it's not an easy task so two thousand revs yes yep. <laughs> Um, so the uh, water card operator can be called many things: water beetle, rubber duck. Oh no, no water beetle, yeah, uh, no. water billy, water can. Yeah, yeah. Wanker in the water. Wanker tanker. in the water tanker. Someone yeah. told me to write that down. That I've yeah. never oh. heard that. Have you? Uh, only on the road, on the highways, and when you go past a fuel tanker or something like that, you get on the UHF and say, "Copy the wanker in the." tanker <laughs> oh right oh okay maybe that's they come from that's that. where it comes yeah. from from road road trains yeah with their fuel tankers oh there's my favorite other person on the mine side the corrugator <laughs> the corrugator commonly called ripples because they leave ripples in the road and that's the grader operator hang on you hear me typing <laughs> we're just editing here i'm just adding oh can't spell. Can't you? Can't. I can't type. But it's swim, 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 <laughs> swimming lanes. <laughs> oh, sw- oh yeah, you leave swimming lanes. Yeah, yeah, because they have uh, dirt coming out both sides of the blades, and we always say something like, "Are oh, you getting ready for the Olympics? Putting in the swimming lanes." Yes. Yeah. I'll fix that up later. And there's ripples, and there's and, and pothole. We call them pothole because they're always in the road. <laughs> yeah, I hate it when there's a grater on your circuit all freaking night. Yeah, you can just go away and have a sleep for a while. Yeah, they're all yeah, they're all in right. Um, I don't remember them. Red cordial day. Red cordial day. We all know what red cordial does to kids. Oh look, swimming lanes was on my list. It created on by a not le- very good grader operator a, or someone yeah, who's learning. A learning, learning. Yeah. That wasn't very nice, was it? That no, was a bit harsh. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I did have that. Okay, carry on. Yeah, red cordial day. That's usually Monday because that's when all the bosses and they're all hyped up and everything. They come out and they look at the pit and they do this and that and it's oh. Uh, like they're on red cordial. Kids on red cordial. Yeah. Just Running crazy. around going, no, right. Yeah. That yeah. digger, you're walking out of there. You're yeah. going there. Everything What'd you do changes. That for? <laughs> yeah. And everything changes. It does. Yeah. They go to the nine o'clock meeting or whatever with the supervisors and come back and go, yeah, no. And then we have a weekly plan. You'll learn about weekly plans too. Your first day back at work after your break, they go through a presentation, your weekly plan. And that's worked out. On Red Cordial Day. <laughs> they <laughs> yes. all go crazy and they all have yeah. ideas and they can't make up their mind which is going to be the best idea. Yeah, and it keeps changing, so don't worry about it too much. Mm. Did I say that out loud? I did. Right, what about this one? This is one of my favourites. <laughs> you can do a crow noise. Oh, we, we go pigeons, not crows. Pigeons, we do crows. Yeah, we go... 
them as pigeons up on the high wall. That means mean the bosses are up there looking down in the pit. Yes, all crow noise. All crow. Yeah. Ah, ah, oh, oh, I knew you'd do a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, if you're not doing something right, which you should be... It's then... because it's your quiz time. Duty, Duty of, of care. care. Oh, my God. <laughs> to follow... How seedy are we? S-O-P's. S-O-P's. Top of Barry. <laughs> Anyone that knows me, don't listen. Turn off now. <laughs> uh, oh, dear. dear. Yes. So, yes. so that if you hear that, that means... Bosses, um, bosses, watch bosses. Watch out, watch out. And bosses usually, are about. It's usually, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not strangers. Uh, it's usually on Red Cordial Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They all come out and have a look. Yeah. Or on yeah. Friday morning, just before lunch, they'll come and do a quick whip around. Before they go because home. Because then they go home because they're on banking hours. Yeah. That's but, right. but they only have the weekend off and we have, you know, seven off. Yeah, more full them for being a boss. Or depending on your <laughs> roster, it might be whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah they, yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, it's all fun and games until someone loses an eye. And yeah. this is something that isn't necessarily just mining. I think I've heard that before. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah, uh, everything. Everything, yeah. But You'll hear it a lot in mining. Yeah. There's a, yeah, there's a lot of fun and games out there. You're pushing like, boundaries. and you, Yeah, you push the boundaries and, and you see just how far old mate's going to take shit. The retaliation, yeah, someone loses an eye. Yeah. Or <laughs> it could be, you know, getting bogged or... Yes. All sorts of yeah. things like that. Like, oh, I knew we shouldn't have gone in there. <laughs> <laughs> you owe a carton. No, the digger driver put me there. <laughs> That's right. Carton free zone. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that one. Um, stimulator. Stimulator. Well, You're you... all going to be stimulated. Depending where you work, because yes. not everyone has not a stimulator. Everybody. But as a greeny, clean skin, trainee, newbie... You should be stimulated. Yes, yes. You will like being <laughs> stimulated. <laughs> no, or you will hate it and be sick. <laughs> you learn you learn how to come across the face. <laughs> no. That's it's, not it's, even funny. <laughs> it's a simulator. Simulator. Where you hop in this shipping container and they have it set up where you can learn how to drive a truck or a digger or a dozer or a grader. And it teaches you what to do in emergencies, how to drive the truck, all that sort of stuff, before you even see a real truck. Mm. So, good suggestion, get yourself stimulated before you actually go out on site. Lovely. Mm. Lovely. Yeah. I started off with many, many, many hours of stimulation yeah, before we had, I drove a we truck when three I started. Weeks. Three weeks of stimulation. Yeah. Mm. We were allowed to get in a truck and be a passenger, but mm. we weren't allowed to drive until we finished this three weeks. On the dicky seat. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's not on there. Wait to editor add that. Dicky yeah. seat is the where pas- the dicky trainer seat. sits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The dicky seat. And yeah, it's not comfortable for the trainer. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's where they'll end up saying Get out, it's my turn, I'm having a drive. <laughs> you right. sit over there yeah. for a while. And um, as a trainee, as a greenskin, as a learner, as a, a newbie, when you get behind the wheel, don't think that you're going to be expected to drive the whole day because you won't. You might get like an hour or a couple of loads. The trainer will swap you back out again and you can relax and get yourself together and go... That wasn't so bad. Mm. And watch them as they're doing it. Yes. Now you've had a go. Yeah. Mm. Watch how they operate, what they do, where they do it, when they do it, because that's all part of your training. It's not us training you. It's about you learning as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And um, just going back to being stimulated, in all seriousness, uh, a lot of the older people are not necessarily old. <laughs> Like Not in like age, me. but older people, uh, more experienced people. Yeah, that's better. Yes, they <laughs> and they say, "Oh, bloody simulator! What a waste of time!" Um, I just got put in a truck and told that's where the 
steering wheel is and off you go and nothing yep. ever happened to me and all that. But it's the mind's duty of care. It's SOPs. Part it's of your training. everything we talked about that they can't just let you just go and do that in mm. the new age. Yeah. <laughs> the new age of mining. Mm. And I started with in a simulator and I'm really glad that I did because I got to know it was a truck I was going to drive so I knew the controls, I knew where the gear stick was, I knew the indicators, windscreen. I got comfortable in the cab after hours and hours and hours in there, in a shipping container. They will give you, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Spew bucket. <laughs> That's it. They'll give you a spew bucket. A lot of people can't hack it. Because of motion sickness and yeah. or not yeah. motion, whatever that is. Because it is computer generated images. Yes. Not like a real car or a truck, but some people do get car sick, and if you do, don't worry about it. They have buckets. They have bags. Yeah, and they they, they allow for that. Yeah. 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 They'll leave the door open yeah. or, or and whatever. If you feel a bit woozy, just tell them I've got to get up, and they'll pause it. Because they go can. Outside. Yeah. 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 It's all good. And I'll leave a link in the, um, not a link, I'll put a video in the show notes, which are at madmumsy.com forward slash beers 44, the number 44. Uh, and it will, I'll show a video of my daughter on a simulator, and it was, it's hilarious, at the <laughs> Queensland Mining Expo in 2006, mm-hmm. 2016 it was, in Mackay. And um, she drove straight up the centre bunk because she didn't realise it was left-hand drive. And because <laughs> it makes your seat wobble, like if you run over a rock or it's yeah. a bit rough on the circuit. It is. And it's... you go and get a load and you go to the dump. And um, that, that's what I was going to say is they simulate emergencies. Yes. So all of a sudden there'll be flames come up on the windscreen and you've got to go through a procedure mm. and you've got to get it right to pass and... It'll be you yeah. lose your brakes and it'll rain, it'll hail, and well, tire depends fires on where you are. And, yep. Tire fires, mm, yeah. Mm. So, um, not that they happen a lot on the mine side, but it's it's a mandatory part of your training. Yep. That you have to know what to do, what mm. to do in the radio. You don't, not like it's one time at band camp. At band camp, yeah, and uh, a turbo let go and. Of course, there was flames coming out the exhaust and all that sort of stuff. And the operator hit the park brake, dropped the steps, got off and run. <laughs> Just run. 100 metres. And then run. Like, what? Like Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Run, Forrest. <laughs> run, Forrest. Oh. And ran away and ran away and ran away. Um, well, he was yeah. obviously shitting themselves. Whereas the first thing you do is shut it down and... Follow the procedure that you're given, the your SOP. S, your, hang on, pause. I can add silence in there. Your SOP. <laughs> Standard operating procedure That's right. for what to do. And fire. what to do in an emergency, yes. Um, so they decided that they would just run away and not nobody knew. Luckily, there was some other machinery that spotted the incident and called the emergency and of course when emergency is called the whole mine site must stop nobody moves until uh, they they put a siren over the radio an emergency siren and everybody must stop what they're doing park safely until the emergency is removed cleared given the all clear that can take hours it could take hours you could be sitting in a truck on a ramp for hours. Mm. Usually, depending on the mine site, but usually they want you to at least get somewhere safe. Get on, you know, keep going up the ramp till mm. you get to a flat spot, even yep. if it's on a corner. Yeah. Yeah, and you want to be aware of, um, you know, emergency vehicles, especially if you're in the area the of area. it. Yes. Emergency vehicles can come around. Got to have radio silence, yep. so all the ERT people. ERT, E-R-T. is that E-R-T. on here? Emergency response team. Yes. These are all qualified uh, level one first aiders and firefighters and... and uh, rescue the, uh, rangers, be, they call rescue them. Rescue rangers, yeah. 
Rush Road Rangers. But they might be there. They might be the ones that save your ass. They're exactly right, and they could mates. be on the grader, or they could mm. be on the digger, or they could be in another truck, and they will be your first responders. They will turn up and say, "Yes, everything's fine. Get out of the truck." Don't Ow. bang the table. Don't bang the table. Ow. <laughs> she hit me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, ERT, emergency response team, your best friends when something goes wrong. Mm. And it might not be fires and accidents. It could be health, health. as well. You yes. know. And they're not doctors, but they do the best that, that they can and get you into the you know, recovery position or whatever yeah. they know. Mm. And in the meantime, the ambulance will be called and yeah. the professionals. ERT, emergency response team. You know, you can join the ERT. You don't have to be a full-time employee or whatever, but you can join them. Um, you do training days. You don't get paid any extra money, like me. Like some places they do. Some do, actually, some yes. Places, some mines do. Some sites yep. do, some don't. Some but ha- do it for the passion, not for the money. That's right, yeah. Well, it's up to you why you do it, but... Yeah. yeah. Um, like school teachers, they don't work for the income. They work <laughs> for the outcome. So it's the same with ERT. You go there not because of extra money, it's because you just might save somebody. mm and if there's a car crash on the road near the mine site, they'll get the ERT yep. out as well for that. That's and right. if there's not enough ERT on site, you don't the work. mine shuts down. Yep. You've got to have a minimum amount of... That's part of the SOPs. It is. Mm. That's um, a good thing to get into if you're um, somewhat medically minded or you want to, you have that passion to help people. That's the way to go. Now for a word from our sponsor. Welcome Julia Hartman and the Bantax Accounting Group to Team Mad Mumsy. Julia is my awesome accountant. She has written two books with financial expert Noel Whitaker and has a passion to help us miners make the most out of our hard-earned cash. Head to bantax.com.au forward slash miners. That's B A N. T-A-C-S to download your free miners booklet and a spreadsheet that will help you calculate the weight of your tools you need for your job. Why, you ask? You might be able to hitchhike a ride with them and claim your trips to work. Sounds confusing? Not at all. Just head over to bantax.com.au and let Julia and the team help you out. You will also find loads of free information and advice on property investing if you plan to really do some great things with your money. Again, that's bantax.com.au forward slash miners and tell them Mad Mumsy sent you. And then, of course, the last two, you're always going to get compliments. Things like, oh, pretty to watch. That could be when you run a load out. For the grader driver. Oh, pretty to watch. You, and when they've asked you to do it. Yeah, don't, don't just do it, yeah. Or it could be, yeah, you've done that before, good job, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but it yeah. could also be if you mess up, oh, you've done yeah, that before. Yeah, you've done that, you stuffed up big time, that's another carton. Yeah, <laughs> oh my God. Hump day, hump day's good, halfway through the week. You reflect on, a th- if you're on seven and seven, you reflect on the three days that you've just got through. And then you look forward to the next three days because after that, you're going home. Yeah, it's all down here. <laughs> it's all down That's here. That's it. And sports day is another one, which is the last day at work. So it's all a little bit of fun. Everyone's got a spring in their step. And, Yay. well, why didn't we start with this one? And, oh, you know, yeah. all of those good things. And usually in the middle of the day, everyone forgets that. And it's just normal Groundhog Day, which is another day. Yeah, every day um, is the same as yeah, the last day. Yeah, especially when it rains. Yeah. And, um, and then as the day starts to get a bit longer, everyone remembers, oh, we're going home. So yes. everyone yeah. cheers up a little bit more. I remember a long time ago, it was actually last century, um, when I first started in mining, we worked six weeks on and one week off. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Fuck that. The first two weeks after you come back, you're telling everybody what you did on your days off and all. Oh, it was great fun. Like we do for two days. Like we do for the yeah. first three days. 
and then the next two weeks was oh why am i here are we there yet it's time to go home yet and the last two weeks you talk about what you're going to do on your next days off (laughs) and it's the same on a seven to seven roster three days oh i did this and i did that and i caught that and i i I ate that fish and i caught that crab and all that and then you sorry you're making noise (laughs) i'm I'm making noises just more effort for me yeah listen to episode 22 i made a couple noises on there 21 21 episode 21 (laughs) That was funny. Anyway, mm. yes, so, and then you look forward to your days off. But you'll only do that if you follow your SOPs. You won't get home if you don't. Exactly. Mm. And your duty of care because someone else might not get home. Yeah. So. Oh, very good. I like yes. that. Okay, what about DCM? DCM, pink slip. Uh, white envelope. White envelope, <laughs> yeah. Don't come Monday. You don't ever want to get a DCM. I got a DCB, which is a don't come back. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, all the same. Yeah. yeah, but I've got a DCM um, because I broke the rules, and I got a phone call before I even got home that said, "Don't come in on Monday. You're penalised one day's pay, one day's work because you broke the rules." What? Was that in mining or in something? It was in mining, yes. It was uh, at another mine that I worked at and they had a policy that... One day at bang camp? Yeah, that, that bang camp. <laughs> Fuck that bang camp. Don't even go there. I'm not going back yeah. to that bang camp. I've hit my triangle enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I after night shift I got in my car and I drove home three and a half hours um, before I got... 100 kilometres, I got a text message saying, don't come Monday. It's your penalty for leaving town before 11 o'clock after night shift. (gasps) Oh, true. I never did know that. Some companies um, fatigue Mm. policy after night shift, you've got to have a sleep before you go home. Have a travel plan. Yes. And you got put off for that? I missed a day. Oh, you only missed a day. They didn't sack you. No, they didn't sack you. It was one day. One day. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 Shit. Yeah. And because it's their duty of care to make sure that you get home safely after your night shifts. After 12 hours of night shift. Well, it doesn't matter if it's night or day, it was probably the same. No. Or did they let you drive no. home after day shift? Well, you always finished on night shift. Oh, right. One because of it was a pyjama yeah. day. Yeah. Yep. yep. Pyjama day. Pyjama yeah. day, yes. yes. Which so, is? Uh, that's we, not on my list, I don't think. No, we used to have a, a, a five and four roster, so you'd work three day shifts, then you'd have a pyjama day, and then you'd do two night shifts. Then you'd go home for five days, and then you'd come back for four, and you'd have two day shifts and a pyjama day and two night shifts. Then you'd go home. So you're always finished on a night shift, and you had to have a sleep. Mm. You could not leave town. And what they used to do was drive through the car park, uh, at the site and write down the cars and their number plates <gasps> and then they would park five kilometres either side of the mine site and if you drove out before 11 o'clock your number was written down and you got a phone call that said don't come on Monday so there's a literal don't come on <laughs> yeah, oh my was. god yeah, it was so like... they're like the fatigue police yes like yes. the Krivart police, that's that, not in here either. It's the, yes, mm. yeah, Krivart bitch. Not Krivart, <laughs> the mess police. What mess, are they? Uh, what do they call that? Where they make sure you don't take food out the Krivart. Oh, and get... the mess police. Mess yeah. police, yes. Yeah, yeah that's yep. not on my list either. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so are we quickly, quickly. coming around on your milk and side? Your handbag side? Handbag <laughs> side, I hadn't heard. <laughs> coming around on your milk and side is you just coming around... The right hand side. I've never known. I don't you know what milk that means. You a cow from the right hand side. Do you? Or is it left hand side? Yeah, see? The other you. left. The other left. That's <laughs> right. So I, when someone says that, I've never said it because I don't get it. Yeah. But I'd think. Left well, hand side. A greater, I'd just come around the side that yeah. I can get around because a lot of time you couldn't come on the other side. Anyway. Yeah, that's right. And also a bit nautical. That's nautical, not naughty. Um, a lot of people say come around on your port side. Left side, whatever. Oh, mm. yes, mm. yes. Okay, 
Truck 69. Truck 69. The love the truck. The love boat. I mean, the love <laughs> truck. And well, then I was talking about this at the crew and I have worked on a few band camps. <laughs> I've been at a few band camps with the Truck 69, I might add. <laughs> and they called it the dinner box. Or like, dinner. awkward. I hadn't heard that one. Or dinner before. for two. Did or <laughs> I remember when <laughs> at this one time band camp truck sixty nine first turned up and I was in it the first couple of days and it broke and I had to call the workshop and they kept saying oh what truck number's that and I'm like, oh my god grow up you know <laughs> it was just our little yeah fun yeah. thing for that week I like truck sixty eight because. They owe you one. They owe you one, yes, I have heard. That is, oh, my God. Okay, go, Baz. Crib heart security. Yeah. Crib heart attendant. Crib heart attendant. Crib security. Crib bitch. Crib heart bitch. Yeah. That's when you're spare, basically. There's mm. nothing for you to do. So it's good to be, though. Yeah, yeah. You hang mm. around the crib hut. You have coffee and, yeah, it's all yeah. good. And Talk you just say, oh, what are you doing today? Oh, yeah. crew up security. Yeah. Yeah. Crew security. The real miners crew up security a lot, you reckon? <laughs> if, well, if nothing's broken, there's nothing to go fix. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But a good yeah. idea with that too, I'm just going to get this out. If you are crew up security, especially if you've been there all freaking night, <laughs> and it's the end of shift, give everything a bit of a wipe down, empty Sweep the, the floor. bin, the new, crew, the new crew's coming in. Yeah. And there's nothing worse than rocking up to the crew bar and it's just full of shit. And That's right. And yep. spilled coffee and food mm. on the table and mm. stuff. So if you are lucky enough to be spare, at least go in before the end of shift and uh, give it a bit of a swizz. Make people know that you're a spare. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me. I'm cleaning the crew bar. <laughs> yep. I'm busy here. Yeah. Come and clean delineators. No, I'm going to clean the crew bar. You go do that. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, yeah. you can have this one because oh. I never really have got it. You haven't got it? No, I kind of do, but it's a made-up thing or is it real? It's a real thing. It's a real thing. Are you telling me? It's, for, it's a real thing for uh, newbies. <laughs> <laughs> Which means it's not real. Yeah. Depending on where you're working and, and what the uh, comedic <laughs> capacity of the operator who calls you says, oh, you better call the workshop. Your flux capacitor is hanging down. And, of course, you don't know a lot about the truck at this time. So mm. you go to the workshop <laughs> channel and you say, uh, this is truck 69. <laughs> Copy workshop. <laughs> Copy workshop. My flux capacitor is hanging down. Can I have someone come and have a look at it? It's like when uh, you go to a workshop and they say, oh, I'm Go and get a short stand and a long wait. And you just uh, stand around yeah. and you stand around and you wait and you wait and you wait. And it's no such thing. Flux capacitor? Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah. Left-handed screwdrivers, stripe paint. Stripe paint. Left-handed right. hammers. Look, yeah. You know. No. Not real. Not real. <laughs> and so, yeah. And I, I'm glad that you confirmed that it isn't real because I'm not mechanically <laughs> minded. I'm like, oh, no, maybe there is because I hear it a lot. Have you not ever, a lot, but over the years I've heard it a few, good half dozen times at least. Have you ever seen the movie Back to the Future? Yes. With the Dorian, isn't it? Yes, the yeah, Dorian. The yeah. Dorian. The reason they couldn't go the first time was because they had problem with the flux capacitor. <laughs> Is that where it came That's from? That's where it came from. Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yes. Oh, so they're having trouble with them. It's like, the flux like capacitor. coming out of a movie. I'm having trouble with my flux. Oh, my God. That's okay. where it came from. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Baz. Yeah. Okay. Uh, dump dogging. Dump howling dog. on the two-way. Oh. Oh. Yeah. You know that one, don't yeah, you? Yeah, we know that one. I don't know why they do it. I can't see the relevance of it, but... What, howling? Um, yeah. Yeah, because there's no trucks in the pit because everyone's up on the dump cleaning their windows oh, waiting for shift change. okay. I didn't even know that one. Did you? <laughs> no. no. We had an old fella out at work this one day at band camp one time, and he used to do it 
every shift. Oh. And he was like, oh, 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 and he did it with a shake in his voice. It was hilarious. <laughs> so that's there. Yeah, okay. That's yeah. like getting close to knockoff time. And they don't want to go back and get that last load. So. Because. Oh. Yeah. Like, oh. They'll miss the bus. Yeah. Yeah. And that's also called flogging the dog. Yes. No hair left on the dog. <laughs> yes, exactly. And um, that might happen with dozers or diggers because they don't want to. We'll, we'll just play with this bit of dirt we got left to the end shift because yeah. otherwise we've got to walk back, we've got to move lighting plants, we've got to drop in or do whatever. And the same with the uh, dozer. They Grader. Uh, everything. They, they do air swipes. Mm. They drive around with a blade. Yeah, the blade. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Or um, water carts driving around with no sprays on. Yeah. It's all flogging the dog. Yeah, that's it. Killing time, in other words. Yeah. 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 Waiting for knockoff. I remember um, someone called Pigeon. Yes. When I first started, and why was he called Pigeon, Baz? He was called Pigeon because at your pre-start, you're told what truck you're driving or what machine you're driving, which light vehicle that you're supposed to go in and what circuit you're running on. He would always get in the wrong light vehicle and go to the wrong circuit, so he'd have to come back to the crib hut. So he was the homing pigeon. He was the homing pigeon. <laughs> and it stuck. It stuck. He it was stuck. pigeon. That was it. He was pigeon from day one. So, you yep. know, you could get stuck with anything. Yeah. And yeah. as as Mumsy said, if someone gives you a nickname and you don't like it, just wear it. Shut up. Just yeah. wear it because they'll get sick of it if you don't respond, but don't whinge about it because you'll wear it forever. Yeah. Forever. And it might change once they get to know you better or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Or they just might keep calling you, get, get over it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, a moth. Moth, yeah. That's usually a doze operator or a oh. grade operator who hides behind the lighting plant on night shift yeah. like a moth to the light. Yes, or OCEs. <laughs> or an OCE. Okay, we've, or we a had, supervisor. We had OCE. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just look for the lighting plant. He'll be at the lighting plant on the other side of the mine. Yes. Whenever we needed him in our pit, he was yeah. on the other side of the mine by the lighting plant. It's yeah. hilarious. But now lighting plants have flashing orange lights, the same as light vehicles, so you don't know whether they are there or not. Ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a point. The, the flashing light is so you don't hit the lighting plant. You know, that's that big thing that's shining in your eyes. I know. but <laughs> and And let's quickly touch on that because... That is ridiculous. Yeah. But it's also true. Yes. So how many times you're driving out and you can't, like, the freaking light is right in your eyes. You could easily run over a lighting plant. Oh, And it sounds ridiculous. It does. But you're blinded by the light. Blinded by the light. Oh, my God. Didn't you see the lighting plant? Of course I did. I hit it, didn't I? Yeah. (laughs) Right, go, Basil. Oh, what have I got here? I'll stay here and guard the dirt. That means I don't want to go and have crib. I'm just going to. I'm going to have a sleep. I'm going to have a nap. Yes. Have a that's sleep. That's exactly what truck. that means. Settling the dust. That's when you, yeah. That's when you pee off your truck. Yeah, and you or a digger the dust. driver or will say, drive. just wait out there, I'm just going to go settle the dust. Settle the dust. Yep. Yeah. Uh, kick a tyre. Kick a tyre. Uh, kick a tyre can also mean have a meeting. Have a bit of a chat. Have a chat or have a pee. I remember old mate down on band camp, I think he was the sergeant major or something, he'd say, I'll catch you on the ground, we'll kick a rock or two, or we'll kick your tyre and have a bit of a chat about what's going on. Oh, Uncle Arthur. <laughs> Uncle Arthur. Uncle Arthur. Oh, God love him. <laughs> uh, take the kids for a swim. Oh, now, yeah. I had not heard that. Have you heard that? Yeah, just going to drop the kids at the pool. Oh, and, and that me- means having a poo. Having a poo, having a number two. Yeah. Taking the kids for a swim. And this was one of those ones that came out at the crib up when I started putting this out. I'm like, I bet you, oh, really? Okay, <laughs> that, no, you have to write that down. <laughs> oh. Angel gear. Oh, dear. Angel gear. Don't you, ever do it. <laughs> if you go down the ramp in angel gear, which is neutral, probably your best outcome is you, you're going to meet an angel <laughs> because, yeah, never. Never do that. Okay, stop, I need a beer. Yeah. I'll have one too, thank you. You're right. Yeah, so, yeah, Angel Gear. You go fast. You really do go fast, but it could 
probably the last trip you have. And they'll say, how does it come up in context? How do, how do we hear Angel Gear? Because you do. Oh, that truck must be an Angel Gear or... You're right, just go down an Angel Gear. Yeah. You do hear it. I'm just trying, I can't think well, how. Well, yeah. With hang a, on, hang on, I'll just let me be. I've got to do that too. Yeah. Sometimes in a circuit, you've got one truck. Oops, I just kicked the table. You've got one truck that seems to catch everybody else mm. um, because they're not following the SOPs yes. of the speed down and up you ramps. You certain speeds. You'll learn all this. You know, stopping but, at stop signs and such. Yeah, so when they catch you up, you say, oh, you must be in angel gear coming down mm. there. You're catching me up all the time, which means neutral, free rolling. Going faster than the truck would if it was in gear because yes. they don't go that fast. Yeah. But, <laughs> but they're not really in angel gear. They're not neutral. They're just exceeding the speed limit. <laughs> Can you read that one? <laughs> okay, it out. Oh, my God. <laughs> We'd all be rich if we hear, oh, does it okay out? Can yeah. you just okay it out? Just, That's a cat truck thing. Just press okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, in a cat truck. Caterpillar. Caterpillar. Cat um. You learn all about cats and Komatsus and Terexes and Hitachis and, and all that sort of stuff. But cat trucks, you have a little keypad and an alarm comes up with a flashing red light and you call the workshop and say, I've got a problem with this and it tells My you what flux the problem capacitor. is. Your flux capacitors run out of something. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, just press OK or OK it out. They just press the OK button. If the alarm goes out, all good, keep going, keep running. Yeah, until five seconds later it comes back. It comes back on. If it comes back up, let me know. Did you shut down and isolate it? That's another thing they say. Did you isolate the truck? Because sometimes that'll reset the computer, get rid of your problem, Mm. but it doesn't. Well, and sometimes (laughs) it does. And, And it's like your mobile phone. A lot of times, it's, if it's playing up, you, you shut it down and isolate it. I say that all the time. Mm. But if you spilt red wine on it like I did once and I shut it down and isolated it, she never came good again. <laughs> so <laughs> press, You didn't press okay. Yeah. But these are workshop terms that yeah. you, you might hear, especially if you're driving cat trucks. Yeah. Okay it out, yeah. does it okay away, yeah. blah, blah. And um, if you've got electric trucks, it's pretty much... Uh, shut it down, isolate it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, which means yeah. going down the bottom, yeah, running back up. That's so, right. So, yes, yeah. uh, and then we come into a bit more uh, people stuff. <laughs> um, a opin- a- opinionated speculation. You know, culture. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that's not the right word. I'm thinking um, blend of crews and stuff like that. Yeah. Anyway, you go. Yeah. You have um, different little clicks in a in a in a crew. Like you'll see these mob hang around together, and that mob hang around together, and that mob hang. I'm a bit of a moth. I go from one to the other. So you're at the lighting plant. No, I no. no. I never go behind. You're a butterfly. A butterfly. You flip That's from better. crew to yes, group. I like to that. group. I do. I don't. I don't assimilate with just one group of people. Um, but you have the koalas, they're, uh, they're the protected species. They mm. like, they get what they want, they get their easy jobs, they get a bit of an early knock off and. Get trained on stuff. Yeah, they're the koalas. Yeah. And then you have the purple circle. <laughs> the purple circle, that's a whole group of koalas that <laughs> hang around together and they all do nothing. Or they all do everything. Well, they'll do a little bit for a bit. Yeah. And then they all have rest. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And a lot of them koalas are also seat covers. And that's the person who's usually in the passenger seat of the boss's car. Yeah. Yes, koalas, seat covers. And when you see one of these koalas driving around with the boss, what do you do? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a bit of love going on over there. <laughs> a bit of brown nosing. A bit of brown nosing. <laughs> or there'll be, um, they might call up and say, I'll come pick you up or, or yeah. whatever. And, mm-hmm. you know, and then that's when it'll happen. And you'll also hear the kissing noises if 
someone saying like we saw earlier, oh, you've done that before. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Oh, yeah. pretty to watch. And then you'll hear, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that they think you're on with that fella or nothing. It just means that they're going, oh, yeah, you even, know, because you're being nice. <laughs> yeah. Even if a fella, you're not on with that fella, really. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah true. Yeah. <laughs> Our skills. Yeah. So it's, but they're the sort of things. And because we're out there for a long time, remember, we're there for 12, 13 hours. Yeah. So we're going to get us through, but you've got still got to keep it within reason, within, there are lines, there are definite lines, and some people step over them, and yeah. some supervisors allow it, others don't, and then when the bosses come, remember the... Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well oh. then, the two ways is absolutely perfect. Yes. Everyone is giving positive, poscoms is another one. Poscoms. Poscoms, yeah. positive, positive communication. communication. Oh, yes, greater six. You're all clear to come around chuck <laughs> five on the right-hand side. Yeah. And, and you know that everyone's going... This is so funny because <laughs> we're all being so professional. Yes. And then they'll do their quick drive around and say, oh, great, pause comms. Yeah. Uh, keep it up. Or they'll <laughs> say nothing and just fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or they'll say, call up the supervisor or catch her at the crew bar. Yeah. We need to talk. Yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. Uh, shit's going down. Yeah. Oh, dear. Something I heard at this one time band camp that I hadn't heard was uh, having a blow. Have you heard that one? Oh, yeah. Have you- yeah, but the context of that is <laughs> shut up. I just come across your face. You know the context, and because that's what I was like. What did you say? <laughs> and this was a supervisor said it to me when I first yeah. started at this band camp. Just having a bit of blow. If you yeah. need, if if you need a blow, just let us, let, let us know. We'll yep. sort it out. But what yep. they meant was if you get fatigued. If you need a rest. If you're crook. If you're this or you're that. Yeah. If you need a blow. Just let us know. Yep. I was like, Hmm. okay. (laughs) I really was taken aback. And I'd been doing it for a lot of years when I first heard that one. So, yes. There you go. And church on Sundays. Church on Sundays. Beer o'clock. Beer o'clock, This is what we're having now. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Yes. Uh, I like this one. Are you expecting visitors? Yeah. (laughs) You see another truckie or a... Grader or whatever, Driving. mainly trucks. Mostly I think, trucks because we have a deck. Yeah. Of oh, I've, I've given away the punchline. Yeah. I've got to water my deck. Deck. <laughs> yes, because on your truck you have your ladder access lights, um, stair lights, whatever you want to, your deck light. Mm. And some people forget to turn them off, day shift or night shift. Doesn't really matter. No. Yeah. Because when you go from night shift to day shift, it's still dark sometimes. And you drive around with your lights on and people call you up and say, you're expecting visitors. Uh, why? Uh, what? <laughs> You've got your front porch light on. Oh. Yeah, the front porch light. <laughs> you know, you over for your front door. Yeah. And it depends on the switches as well. So, And sometimes you can see the ladder light and depending on what truck you're driving, sometimes you can't see it. So you don't even know. Mm. And some of the switches are upside down and sometimes yeah. they're off when they're up and they're off when yeah. they're down. But and... that's because they're two-way switches. The one on your dash, you might be saying it's ah, off, yes. but the one downstairs is saying that it's on. Yes, because you could... Good. Oh, that's why. See, yeah. you're always learning. Number one, one of Mumsy's, Mad Mumsy's <laughs> number one tips. I've got lots of number one. <laughs> Always learning, no matter how long you've been doing this shit. Because you can leave your ladder light on, which is logical, when you're coming off off your truck and you're going down the 14 steps or whatever it yep. is, and then to the bottom, and then there's a little toggle switch. That you can switch it and off. And you can switch it off or just leave it on. Or you yeah. could turn it on to go up. Yes, and then turn it off when you get up there. And so, therefore, when you're in the cab, it works, goes both ways. Yes. It goes both ways. L- oh, yeah, my AC, God. DC. You are still training me. I'm now. still training that's, her. Cheers. That's awesome. I'm I love that bit. Her. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. I expect... All right. Um, <laughs> something is following you. Oh, yes. And this is a very discreet way. Mm. That's a carton. It's also a carton. <laughs> but it's yeah. a discreet way. Yeah, of letting your dozer or your grader 
know that they've got their rippers on the ground and they're tearing great marks in the road. So mm. you call them up and say, hey, something's following you, and they look at the back and they see, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's Dog. a carton. Dog. <laughs> I've done that when I was learning the grader. Oh yeah. Yep. And then I remember I went from, it, w- it was weird when I was going from loader to grader because I'd pull up in the loader mm. and think I've got to put my rippers down. Oh, no, rippers. there's no rippers in the loader, you <laughs> I have seen a loader with rippers. Oh, really? Yeah, you rip it and then come back and then bucket it out. What is it called? A backhoe? Uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, it's... um. Like when you're fixing soft spots in the road, mm. you rip it and then you box it but out. But what do you rip it with if you're in a loader? It had rippers on the back. Oh, it had? Oh, yeah. right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So you rip rip the soft spot and then you come out and then with your bucket you box it out. And then, and then, get then a you load. go there and get yeah, we'll dry dirt and put it back in. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And then do a bit of kiwi back blade to make blade. it look yeah. pretty. Cause bit, of, the, bit of a kiwi push. Because there's no graded operator within kiwi. That's right. They're oh always too busy God. chasing spillage. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's keep going. You've got a passenger. You've got a passenger. That means on your deck. Well, that's when I had a passenger. Oh, okay. If you call up and say you've got a passenger, not you tell someone else you've got a passenger. Or they've got, you'd think they'd know. But yeah. 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 It usually yeah. means there's a rock somewhere. Rock somewhere. Usually on the headboard of the truck. Ah, uh, right, uh, yeah. You've got a passenger. Uh, if Or I would call, if I was in the loader doing clean-up, I would call the truckies and say, um, bit of a mess over here. Looks like some of your passengers are throwing their kids overboard. Look. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I haven't heard that one. And then go and clean it up. But normally it's a, a rock on your headboard or something like that. Or if you've got a cherry on top, that's, you've got a big rock sitting up on top of your yeah. road. Take, Take it easy because it, it might fall off. Going around the left-hand corner or right-hand corner because it might fall off. There's different um, different names for rocks? Yes. yes. Yeah, there is. They're, depending on the size of it, you could have a, a, a bundi, which is a you know a fair-sized rock, or you could have a, a ghoulie or a gibber, which is just all rocks, all sorts of rocks. Um, bar fridge, that tells you that's mm. a pretty big rock. Yeah. Or you could have a small car or a Volkswagen or a, a yeah. Troopy or something like that sitting on your back. That's that's a big rock. That's mm. a big rock. I remember one of the band camps said that the bass drum was 120 tonne in one piece of rock mm. going up the ramp. And then shrapnel causes small rocks, stuff just spread out across the road and yeah, the ramps. Shit, and people going too fast around the corner. And that actually can be problematic because underneath your shrapnel, normally you've got a, a glassed off ramp and that it's like marbles and that's where trucks trucks lock up their tyres and skid mm. and lose bits of rubber. Mm. And then you get the tyre fitter driving around saying, there's a lot of rubber on the road, we need to get this road fixed up. So then the grader has to come and rip it legally with his <laughs> rippers down. Yeah, with our dog on. <laughs> yeah, something following him. Yeah. Yeah, and, and fix the road up, yeah. A fly rock? Fly rock, fly rock, oh, nasty stuff. That's usually after blast, um, which we all get evacuated for the blast anyway. 99 times out of 100, you will never see a blast. Mm. But on the odd occasion where it's on the far side of the pit and the crib hut is without outside the exclusion zone, you can watch a blast go off. But fly rock is all the top rock that gets blown really, really high and really, really far, and it could be 500 metres away from the blast. Mm. Which is why most sites have 1,000 metre thousand exclusion zone. 1,000 metre exclusion zone, yep. I was just testing you. Uh, I was in a <laughs> toilet once at band camp one time. Did you have shrapnel? And there was no. <laughs> and I didn't take the kids for a swim. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't settled. I was probably settled in the dust, we'll say. And um, no, no fly golf. rock come on the, on yeah. the thing. Yeah. And I've been... So clearly we weren't far enough away and we should have been moved. Yeah. Or... I don't know, what the wind or whatever. But I remember a few times you're standing there and you can hear the countdown of the of the blast, you know, 10 seconds to blast, blah, blah, blah. And then um, 
someone will throw bloody rocks up on the veranda <laughs> of the of the crib up where you are. Yeah. Like, oh, and you jump, and then and then everyone goes, ah, got ya. Bloody yeah. <laughs> okay. mongrel. I know a van camp over on the other side of the world. A guy had been on holidays. He was the shot fire. He'd been on holidays, and when he came back from the big smoke, he brought his brand new car with him. And in those days, it was like if you had to go in the pit, you just took your car in the pit. So he went and um, parked up the top and then jumped in the mine vehicle, went down and tied in the blast and all that sort of stuff. And then they drove away and firing in 10 seconds, fire on, boom. And when he went back to get his car, there was a hole in his bonnet the size of a wheelbarrow because a fly rock Ooh. had landed and buried his hemi motor six foot underground. So, <gasps> wow. And that was at the top of the pit and they were 100 metres below. So wow. fly rock isn't always small. No, it, no, it's not. Yeah, it that's depends right. if it's sitting right on top of the hole. Yeah, it'll fly. Yeah, and usually straight after a blast. Graders straight down, dozers, graders, dozers clean loaders, off ramps, yep. do everything, get and then open up the road. We wait for the bus and get told, oh, all right, then we'll go back to work. <laughs> we like a good bus. Us, us truckies. Us truckies. Last in, first out. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. At yeah, blast time, anyway. Um, cat poo. Cat poo. Same thing, but it's usually what comes off the back of a cat truck. Yeah, cat people. Yeah, sure. but a cat... Because they have gear changes as opposed to electric trucks, which just go wah, up yep, the ramp. That's cat right. Cat trucks will hunt from second and third. First yep, that's right. You've got to lock them down. And you're meant to lock them down. And lock them into first gear so that you don't change gears going up the ramp and putting cat poo on the ramp. And greatest drivers don't like They that. hate cat poo. Yeah, and they say... He's a good segue. Have we got a bit Can't of... Be great. <laughs> There's, there was a bit of spillage on the ramp. Can you come clean it up? Oh, you're breaking up. You're breaking up. Oh, you're breaking up. I can't hear because he's usually on the way to the crib hut. To yeah, especially at the end of shift. I don't care about the rocks. Oh, You've been sorry, doing you... it all night. Lock them down, you bloody cat trucks. <laughs> yeah, sorry, you're breaking up. What about hold on to your wobbly bits? Oh, I do that all the time. Oh, oh, you mean at work. Okay. <laughs> if you're under a digger or a shovel or something and they've got a big rock that they want to put in your truck, they'll say something like, get your teeth together or hang on to your wobbly bits because this is going to hurt. Yeah. So, yeah, brace yourself, hands on the steering wheel, push back against the seat, feet on the floor. Don't turn breathe your head. Breathe in. Breathe, breathe in and wait. Relax. And some of them are really gentle and you don't even know it's gone in. So. Yeah. I I kind of liken it to when you go to the chiropractor and you know they're going to crack your neck oh. and they say, just relax. Yeah. And you're like, I, I, you know, so I can't relax because <laughs> I know you're going to smash my head that way any second and it's kind of like that. Yeah. But I've also said, hold on, I've said hold on to your wobbly bits to people that want to, come on the, on our floor or up on the dump yeah, or whatever, yep. and it's really rough. Yeah. Yep. Or the water cut. Oh, just come in and, yeah, well, hang on to your wobbly bits, that's especially right. if you've just gone into a new area and it hasn't been graded or, and that's rough or as whatever. Guts. So, yeah, basically that's what it means. It's, it's rough yeah, as guts. Rough hang as on. guts. It's passion fingers passion and get your Leatherman fingers. out. Passion fingers. We have a lot of people who have passion fingers. Some of them are very pedantic and they will pick the slightest thing wrong with a machine and say, oh, copy fitter, got this wrong, got this wrong. Or maybe they're doing something wrong or there's a folding machine, but they break it. They break it. They pack it up. It's broken. Just someone who and then they always jump. ends up in something that breaks. Yeah, and they jump on another machine and that breaks. And, and so sometimes that freaking happens. It does. You just have a night where I, you're talking to the fitters all night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm on, yeah. I haven't even been on my channel. I've been on your channel all <laughs> yeah. night. Yeah. So, yeah, we all know what passion fingers means, don't we? We do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes, get, a get, person who breaks everything they touch is yes. what I have written down. Yeah. And get your Leatherman out. Yeah. 
please break the diggers so we can have a rest. Yeah, about or Passion Fingers is accused of always having one. <laughs> it's a multi-purpose tool, much like a Swiss Army knife, because a Leatherman is actually a brand. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. It's yes, a, and a lot of people do have them in mind. Multi-purpose yeah. tool. It, it's a, it put holes in hydraulic hoses. It can cut electrical <laughs> wires. Cut lines. <laughs> yeah. Unscrew It can put stuff. a hole in a tyre. Yeah. 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 So get when we're getting out. a bit doughy on nights, you've got yeah. get your Leatherman out, with you? Yeah. That Rip. bloody digger's never going to break. Yeah. Rip off a, a quick tip or a gum guard or something. Yeah, yeah. Park That's up for a bit so I can have a sleep. Yeah. Oh, here's one. I'll see you on the ground. That's yeah. when uh, someone wants to play games and they want to run a load out on the dump or they want to tip it crooked or tip it on top or tip it short and the dozer operator says, I'll see you on the ground. That's yeah, but he's only I have ever... seen it happen where yeah. machines have pulled up and they've got out and someone goes, a punch calls off. up the supervisor, you better get down there. Yeah. Oh, God, what? But that's what it means. So deal with it. Yes. So if someone says, I'll see you on the ground, or at least wait till you get to the crib. It could be, I'll see you at the crib hut, or I'll see you at the bike rack out the back of the shed, or something like that. Yeah, Yeah, or or I'll catch up with you later, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what it means. Uh, No such thing as a stupid question. That's true. That is true. Until you ask it. No, no. It should be true. No, it's not. Uh, until you ask it. No, because... I've seen many questions get shot down in flames and no answer was given. Yeah. And you think, well, that was a, you know... Because that's what I was about to say. There's no such thing as as newbies, greenies, trainees, even people learning, experienced people learning new machinery. Yes. There is no such thing as a stupid question. You may get a stupid answer, but... There is Good. no such thing as a stupid question because you want to know something. And if you don't know... And if they know and go, oh, that's so simple, because they already know. Yeah. But you And don't, therefore that's a stupid answer. That's the stupid answer. Yeah. There is no... If you don't know something, ask a question. If you don't want to do it on the radio, then go and see somebody at the crib, a trainer or someone who is doing the same job as you. And ask the question. Mm, because... Ask it a bit more discreetly than yes. at the pre-start meeting or on the two-way. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If you feel, Ooh, I should know. And I find, mm. <laughs> I feel like I've got stupid questions all the time. <laughs> the answers that are stupid. Oh, but my challenges, I guess, are when it's something, I've been doing this for so long, I should know the answer to this. So, therefore... I shouldn't answer because I'm meant to know it. Um, the common response is, I'll get back to you. <laughs> I'll get back to you. Yeah. I'll get back to you. I'll get back that, to you. That means... Yeah. That, I'll take that on board. I'll take that on board. Mm. That means quite simply that they've never been asked that question before and they really don't yeah. know the answer. And this is what Sean said when he... Fir- uh, in the, the interview. the bandmaster or the drummer? No, Sean, the <laughs> underground, Sean and Shifty... I'll leave a link to that episode in the show notes. And they came from underground to an open cut mine. And we sat down right here in this donger and had a chat about Mm. um, their underground mining journey and then the differences between between the both. And he said when he first went underground, he was asking stupid questions all the time. Yeah. Because he didn't know. And then it came out that this one time... A couple of them at the pre-start or whatever said, yeah, well, I don't know that either. Mm. Why do we do it that way? Or why is it like that? Exactly And right. they didn't know either and mm. they never even thought to ask yep. and it ended up getting changed. So, yeah. 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 Well, as a trainer assessor, I have a, a lot of questions posed to me and if I don't know the answer... Um, I will say, I'll look that up for you. I don't... I. I don't know. Mm. I, quite honestly, I don't know. I'll go mm. and look in the in the manual, or I'll, I'll call the workshop and I'll find out. Yeah. And if say, it's about the truck. If it's about yeah. the truck, yeah. Yeah. If it's about the mining, like dumping or loading or whatever, if it's part of your, the the truck operation, I can probably answer that. But if it's a why do they do that, mm. then I'll say I'll refer you to 
the digger operator or the dozer operator and they will be able to tell you. Yeah. They'll elaborate because yeah. they know why they're doing it because the boss told me to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you go and see yeah, the boss and say, why is, can you explain why that's happening? And if you get a stupid answer, then you could say, how am I supposed to learn? Yeah, or if you get different answers yes. too, which will happen a lot. Oh, for sure, because like, everybody does something different or yeah. believes that they're right. Yeah, but just take it all on board and then do it your way yeah. within the SOP. Oh, my God, we got to keep going because i got to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> you're all right, you can go to work. I'm, I'm oh, going to bed too. What? what was that? Are your ears painted on? What? Are your ears painted on? Oh, sorry, you're breaking up. <laughs> Have you got your ears on, Buzz? Have you got I'm your I'm going to go to bed soon. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that obviously... Means, are you listening? <laughs> obviously, that's our next yes. point. Did you like that? that was I did, cool. I like that. Your yeah. ears painted on. You got your ears on? You will hear, are your ears painted on a yeah, lot? A lot. When you say, what? have you got your ears on that sort of getting someone's attention? Mm. Um, hey, got your ears on truck 69? Or when somebody tells you something and you do like the other left. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect example, Baz. What do they get? Your ears painted on. Hey, yeah. What? What? You're breaking up. You're breaking up. <laughs> You're breaking up. Breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, Crip dear. time. <laughs> they always hear that. Yeah. You always hear that. Park oh, up. Yeah, yeah, park them up. Yeah. Well, actually, no, sometimes they don't. And keep going and you're sitting there waiting for them. Um, okay, so you said you hadn't heard this one, but are you backing up your five trailers? So <laughs> in, a, in a dump truck, we're meant to go, wah, turn around behind the digger really close, you know, within the SAP, blah, 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 and get in quick. And if someone turns out real far, and you'll get this even in the bus. Yes. <laughs> if yeah. someone's driving the bus and they're doing a real wide turn and, and then they're slowly back and back and someone's saying, what are you backing in your trail? Your five trailers there? Bands yeah. or whatever. So, yeah. 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 Yep. You have heard that. Maybe. I do. But yeah. Yeah, not five trailers. It's yeah, not normally, five. Maybe three. Normally it's, uh, what are you waiting for an invitation? <laughs> Waiting for an inv- That's a good one that's yeah. not on here. Yes. Uh, we're going to touch on this, maybe a little bit politically incorrect, but you'll hear it. You will. And it is. You will. Uh, and it goes along with fairy piss. So we'll talk about yeah. fairy piss first. But I take that, I, you know me, I love angels and fairies and stuff. And so that's when it's. A little bit of rain, but the dots haven't joined up yet. On the windscreen. So that's fairy piss. Yep. And, and now we're going to talk about poof de dirt. Poof de dirt. Fairy piss is when you get spots and then you get dust and <sighs> your windscreen. Yeah. Just crack. hurry up and rain, yeah. would you? Make and up that your usually mind. happens. Huey? That usually happens when you're digging poof de dirt because <laughs> poof de dirt. <clears throat> it's got no guts. It's got it's unstable it's it's just messy it's your topsoil actually it's the level below the topsoil is your puff to dirt you don't even have to blow it up it's just soft and um yeah puff to dirt there's there's no rocks in it i'll edit this and make it acceptable enough but it is something that you're going to hear oh for sure and what it means is that um you need to know when you're in puff de dirt because if there's puff de dirt up on the dump and that's what you're backing up on with a fully loaded truck, yep. um, you're probably going to sink. The tip head might crack and pull away. They might get you to dump short. There might even be a JSA because you're in puff de dirt, but that yep. will not be in the JSA. They won't call it that. No. no. They will call it topsoil or, or red dirt, or, or, red dirt yeah. or something so quite often though they'll they'll dump all the puff to dirt on one dump yeah they without tend to mixing do it yeah mm. because as, as or mum, use it for sheeting sheeting on the floor and then filling we just in holes slide yeah. even more because it's wet it up really... and have fun yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah, yeah that is something that you will hear and and it's also cream digging it is that's just you because can pump the jam. Pumping the jam. Pump the jam. You can load and load because there's no big rocks or 
hard digging or anything like that. It's just soft, yeah, easy, being blown up really small. Um, yeah, just cream. And that's where you get digger operators who want to break records about how many loads they get out and all that sort of stuff. Oh, got a bit of cream digging there. Cream digging. And another word for that is also rice bubbles. Rice bubbles. Um, and that's good for shedding. Like if you've got yeah. a rough floor or a rough dump or something like that, you, you take your rice bubbles or your, your cream and you just... Sheeting sheet, material, yeah. Sheet the whole place, get rid of all your bumps and rocks and all that sort of stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and wheat bix is Wheat-bix. that we I love wheat bix. I have wheat bix every day, but it's pretty much the opposite of rice bubbles. Yeah. So it's big, chunky, hard to dig, slow loading, machines break. Yeah. The operators press <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, I just went through this very recently. I was mm. like. Get the freaking drill and blast engineer in my truck and tell him to put more bomb in there and blow it up. Blow it up. Do but some bubbles. of it they don't even blow up, so they just have to dig it. It's yeah. uh, free, free dig. dig. Free dig. So, um, Most puff to dirt's free dig because you don't have to blow You it don't up. mind puff to dirt no, free dig, but, but your, you don't like big... your wheat mix and your wheat mix, wagon, yeah. <laughs> or they've actually done a blast and it's... It, should be blown up more yeah. and it or takes it a lot and yeah. that's when we get things like the Volkswagens on the corner and yeah. <laughs> yep. and Got harder a than a bull's head <laughs> this a digger driver told me this one it's hard digging and you know it stuffs up the machines too oh, the diggers sure. don't yeah. worry about it getting in the truck and not smashing us around yeah but the yeah. teeth and the that can the, actually uh, blow boom yeah stress. the boom cracks that can actually blow hoses because the amount of hydraulic pressure that's being pumped into the hose to get the machine to do something and oh. the machine's not doing it it'll blow a seal in the hose yeah right oh yeah it's kind of like holding your breath and going yeah because like it's pushing oil <laughs> did in. you see that you can't see yeah, you, can't, you can't see it we'll do yeah. a video um <laughs> pushing the oil into the hose because the mm. pump's still and you're still like that yeah and where's it going to go yeah to no. the weakest point yeah blow out the seal uh, right and, and then, then that's when we get asleep that's when we get asleep <laughs> yes the dig it down yeah <laughs> and uh i will keep moving on here only as good as your worst trucking yeah yeah if you've We've got, kind of touched on that before. Yeah. Mm. If if you've got six now, you guys as greenies, trainees, newbies, um, you're going to be a lot slower. You are going to be slower while you're learning it. So we're not saying you're the worst truckie, but once you've got a bit of experience and you're running around the same as everybody else, there's always some people who don't follow the yes, SOP so and travel, they go faster. They might even throw it in angel gear or something and roll down the ramp. But then you'll get those who are a little bit more cautious and do everything by the book, something like, I don't know, your friendly trainer assessor or something like that. Yeah. And he can be called the worst truckie on the circuit because he's so slow, mm. but he's safe. Following duty of care, following the SOP. Yeah. And that will determine the dig rate of the digger, whether they dig lots of dirt or they dig not so lots of dirt. Mm. And And also, there's some truckies that are always pulling up for a pee. For a pee. Or they're always got their passion fingers out and... Calling up the workshop, yeah. there's always something going on, or um, they're just lazy. Yeah, they fall asleep mm. when they're meant. <laughs> how many times do you see people falling asleep on the when you're uh, in a line up waiting to get loaded? Yes, yeah, yeah. And that's another whole issue as that's well. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. or they're just having a bad day, or they really don't like that digger driver tonight yep. or the dozer Let's driver and I'm going to run it out and yep. I'm going to 
I'm going to back in slow because you're an asshole because yep. you threw rocks at me yep. or whatever. Like, so so that, that can be the worst truckie can yeah. be for a variety of reasons. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. And, and yeah, if your cycle's not going around properly, you, yeah, mm. yeah, you're not. You're only as good as your worst truckie. That's it. And uh, shit rolls downhill and we're at the bottom. Yes, the we, we're the bottom dwellers. The so truckies. everything's all, you know, the whole mine, truck- every mine I've been on, it all comes down to what time <gasps> you get that last load. <laughs> we're going to go broke if yep. you don't get that last load at this time yep. or the first load. It's, a truck- like, it's always the truckie's fault. Nothing to do with, you know, put some more shit in the ground to blow it up so we can... Yeah, move it quicker, and there's all spillage on the on the corner, and the grader has to come clear. Bloody truckies, bloody truck. Well, just remember, you didn't put that dirt on the back. It was the mm. digger operator who put it on there. Put too much on, put it on the wrong place. Yeah, go around the corner, shit everywhere. That's it. Sometimes it is the truckie that's going around the corner too fast. Too fast. Sometimes it's the digger driver loading it up too much. Sometimes it's the freaking design yes. of the road. Of the road. There is no mm. way. I have been I have been on corners and because Mad Mubsy gives a shit, right? In mm. case you didn't know, I'll give a shit most of the time. <laughs> and <laughs> I'll go around the corner, especially when I was full on in grading mode as well. I yeah. really love graders yeah. drivers because I feel for them. Yes. And so and then it would be like, Oh, I to need be. a clean up on R one, you know, like <laughs> That's my rocks. I'm yeah. like, well, if I if if they're going to come off and I drove like that, what's the point of even trying? That's right. And it comes down to design as well, off which is engineers and, of, yeah. and yeah. So dozer operators who built the road. Those uh, fucking dozer. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh dear. Uh, no. We're nearly at the end, peeps. Thanks for hanging in, but hopefully you're <laughs> sticking with us with this language. Yeah. Because it is a whole new language. It and is. Yeah. yeah. And I'm glad yeah. that you're here to talk to me about it because it wouldn't be the same if it was just me mm. because it's better to roll don't, off don't each other. Don't think you're making all this shit up. I know. Yeah. But we're saying stuff at the same time. Like exactly. The other fucking crew. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. The other fucking crew. That you know, there's always a song. fuck up. There's a song. I need to add that in the show notes, note to editor. Mm. There's a... There's a there's a song, The Other Fucking Crew. Is there? Yeah. Uh, uh, I know this one time at band camp, this old fella used to play it all the time on uh, the two-way. Hold the two-way handle on and yeah. he had it on his phone back in the day when you used to have your phones. <laughs> yeah. Um, I used to play, we gotta get out oh, of this yeah, place. That's, that's, the, that's the miner's anthem. Yeah. Because there's always a better place to go. Anywhere. <laughs> anywhere. Um, yeah. yeah, so The Other Fucking Crew... Are the people that are there when you're not, pretty yes, much? all three of them. All three of them. <laughs> because it's the ones you swap out day, night shift. Yes. And then it's also when, like, tomorrow, yeah. I go to Mum, work. No, 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 no. Mumsy is the other fucking crew. Yeah. <laughs> and tomorrow I go to work to see what the hell they've done while we've been oh, away for seven days. we made days. a mess. We made a mess. Mm. It's crap. So, yeah, that's the other thing. <laughs> you know, they it's always crap. set you up, the other crew, they... The lighting plants aren't in the right spot and, you know, the trucks aren't where they said they were and all sorts of things. So be aware of that. They say there are no surprises. That's why we have good pre-starts and stuff. There are no surprises. How many times are you driving around going, oh, that road shot? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, no one told us that. Someone didn't tell me that. <laughs> Back in the day closed. at Bank Camp. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, and uh, that is also called on the dark side. Oh, on the dark the side. The dark side. Or it can be your crew, but on the other side of the mine. Yes. Yeah. So. On the- we don't have a dark side at the moment. We have a retirement village because that's where all the old people were. Oh, are you, and you're not there. I'm not there. I'm oh not old. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. Yeah. Compa- Moving on. Compared to them. <laughs> compared oh, compared to them. To them. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. So, uh, a shit show. It's a brothel down here. Yeah. And uh, a clusterfuck. Yeah. Which is apparently. All Everything's of the above. gone wrong. So it's a <laughs> bloody it, shit show everywhere. Yes. Because of the other fucking And it's <laughs> like a brothel down here. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's you'll like hear that a lot. Everything, it's a fuck. Yeah. 
Uh, and then we'll just quickly touch on on these, and then we and then we'll be done. But it's about when you're getting loaded by the digger, yeah, shovel loader, whatever the machine yeah. is, wherever you're working. Um, but you'll hear oh a love tap, yeah. so they've just touch the side of your tray it might be hit by the digger like the actual teeth and stuff yeah. or it could be a rock or no love tap is when they actually the touch machine you touch. yeah 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 oh didn't see you there sorry yeah <laughs> oopsie didn't yeah. know there was a you've time. already put two buckets yeah in me. how could you not know i was there yeah <laughs> and it, and it's good um when they call up and say mm, copy truck whatever are you right? And then, or if they know you, you're right in there, mate. Or, yeah. oops, sorry, you know the voice. And right. if you're not, always make sure you speak up. And yeah. say, yeah, no, nah, um, and they'll have to come down. Don't move your truck. Get get them to see what, what's happened. Yeah. Because shit do, does happen. Yeah. People can and do get hurt. And it might be the digger, there was a machine failure that made the... Um, the Bucket. Bucket fall down on your tray. Yep. That's not anyone's fault. It's just shit happens. That's right. But yeah. it needs to be take pictures and recorded and yeah. all of that. So. Sometimes a big rock will fall off the bucket and land yeah. on your dovetail, which is the back of your tub, and it'll actually lift the front of the tub off the truck. And then, of course, it's going to go <gasps> bang down. Oh, my God. And, that's, and straight away, the digger operator will be on the radio and say, you okay everything all right so when you're being loaded try and keep a forward facing position don't be bending over looking out the window or getting shit out your bag when there's rocks coming in because if a big rock comes in and you're in an unusual position and if you do feel a twinge in your neck or your back or your shoulder call it straight away don't oh that hurt and then just keep going because in the morning you might not be able to get out of bed mm. because your neck's fucked or your back's broken or whatever. Yeah, because so. it can take a few hours <clears throat> before it settles in. Before yeah. it set and and it it does happen a lot and that is why we were saying things like about rice bubbles and wheat bix. That's right. And why wheat bix costs companies a lot of money. Yes. And why yes. it's so important we need rice bubbles. <laughs> we need rice bubbles. We need rice bubbles all round. Please drill yes. and blast Cocoa people. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, my Twitter driller, do okay. get on to your people. Hey, what happened there? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he right. listens, so he'll, he, yeah. yeah. Um, and so... All they've got to do is put their drill holes closer together. Oh, yeah. But and then they fill them up and then that blows it up. Yeah. That works. But then they'll get told they did it... they got to do too, it by too many meters. Well. They get paid by the meter. Yeah. Why wouldn't they do it? The, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. a lot of times, too, with that is the digger or the shovel will, will go into the face or where, wherever and they'll, they'll grab a bucket full and they'll put it in the truck but they don't see that there's actually a big rock in there. And Very. they'll say, oh, sorry, didn't see that rock in the bucket, mate, that yep. rock. And um, most of them, I have come across some assholes who don't really give a shit and they'll throw it at you. And they'll but, lift the boom even higher. Yeah. And if, you, and if you're being <laughs> their worst truckie of the day, guess who's getting the worst you're all the big get, rocks? You're going to get the shit show. Oh, maybe that's <laughs> what happened to me the other night. <laughs> oh, maybe I was the worst truckie. Blame your And trainer. he saved all the big ones for me. <laughs> yeah. No, not even. Oh, yeah. Been. That rock's got so-and-so's name painted all over it. Yeah, yeah. And, and they'll say, oh, you saving that up just for me. Yeah. And I have called him up before. Um, I did this just the other night. And... Um, he grabbed a big bucket and uh, of we were in big rocks and there was a big one balancing on the um, at the top and I didn't think he could see it in there. Mm. And I called him up. I did started my turn and I did half my turn and I stopped and I said, "Can you?" Because I'd already been smashed a few times that <laughs> night. I was on watching these rocks and I said to him, "Can you see that?" That rock at the front of your bucket, he goes, yeah, I can, but it should fall down the clam. It should be all good. I'm like, right, oh, and, and I'm driving in. And he, and that's what he said. There's um, there's a fair bit of fines in with it. Yeah. 
and, yeah. the, and the rock on top would then sit on Yeah, fire. but it was at the front edge of the top, and yeah. all I could see when I did my turn was this big rock, first bucket, <laughs> on thing, and you're fucking joking, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. I don't want oh, that. I don't want that because yeah. what they are meant to do is put a bucket or two, or two of vines, like the smaller stuff, before they put the big stuff in. But it's hard for them if there's all big if stuff. If they don't see it. If there's no mm. little stuff, well, yeah, or, the, or they don't see it, or the, they don't the see bucket. it, yeah, yeah, which is what we're at. That's when you do a loop, yeah, drive around, let the next truck go in, <laughs> yeah, but you might end up with the worst one, oh, yeah, I'll do another you loop, don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm not coming back, I'm just gonna go and clean the window, yeah, I'll just go to the crib up, <laughs> go um, clean my pants, <laughs> yeah, and uh, this we might finish with this one, which is. Swap you out. Swap you out. Put yeah. that truck in the go line. Grab yeah. your gear. Grab your gear. Get out. You're not cutting it. And get out. <laughs> and don't always assume you've done something wrong and you're That's about right. to get a pineapple, which was uh, our first one. How's that yeah. for a good tie back? <laughs> yes. Yes. Awesome. Um, like we said, you might just be needed elsewhere or someone else needs that truck. Yes. Bloody trainers, they want the best dickies in. Of course we do. So, yeah. Get out of that truck, get in this yeah, one. Yeah, I know which has got the best seat now. Yeah, they have a list. Yes. That's the go. So, um, yeah, if you have any that you can think of that we need to share, please leave a comment. And if you end up at our band camp, because we're at the same band camp, just come and see us. Say good day. Mm. Everyone knows Mad Baz. Mad Baz. And Mad, mad Mumsy. <laughs> It's funny they don't call me that on crew. Yeah. And uh, like you say about the Nick, I haven't really got one. And I think that, that's what I would like to be called. <laughs> <laughs> but of course no one does because you want to be. Well, I yeah, have to call so. me that because that's what's written on my hat. Yeah, all right. So if it's written on your hat, it's that's true. What, yes, it's yeah. true. It's like Facebook. For some Facebook is true. Oh, it's true. Everything. <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Baz. No it's, worries. As usual, it's been gold dripping from the ceiling here, and um, I know that after I edit half the shit out, we dribbled about. Yeah. <laughs> no. Ah, um, it's all good. But uh, hopefully you will now start to understand a little bit more of the mining language and the mentality that goes along with it <laughs> because there's a lot to it. Just, and um, Just remember, it's all good fun till someone loses an eye. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thanks, Baz. Cheers. Thanks, Mumsy. See you, guys. See you out there on the ridges. And uh, now you get to go home for seven days and I get to go to work for seven days, so I better shut up and go to bed. (laughs) Cheers. We gotta get out of this place. (laughs) If it's the last thing we ever do. (laughs) So there you have it. Thank you so much for sticking with us right to the end. That was a heap of fun. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. It's always great to sit down with Mad Baz. We don't see each other that often, in case you couldn't tell. I really do think that it's going to be one of my most favourite episodes because it was fun, it was valuable, especially to newbies and to all us old-time miners. It's uh, just a good bloody laugh, you know. So if you have any others that you would like to add, hit me up on social media or head over to mining.teachable.com and sign up. It's free. So is the Giggle Glossary uh, course, which is basically just the PDF of where it is. And I'll add this audio in there as well. So you can sign up there and add a comment, add yours, any other descriptions to those that you would like to add. Uh, No names, please. Remember, it's one time at band camp. So thanks so much for listening. The show notes for this can be found at madmumsy.com forward slash beers 44. That's the number 44. And remember, if you haven't already or continue to please share with your mates. The easiest way probably to share with your mates is grab their phone, find their favorite podcast app and search beers with a minor, subscribe them. And then hit play on their latest on the latest episode. And I hope you've done that as well. If you haven't, make sure you do and you'll never miss an episode. So thanks so much for listening. Until next time, stay safe, be real, be special and have fun. For we only live once. Cheers.